We are live and direct on Testosterone Overload. Welcome to Drawing Blood, brothers. Tonight, we celebrate the return of the immortal Hulk Hogan to Monday Night Raw with a cavalcade of international comic book artists. First up, we have your friendly neighborhood ninja. Next to him, my lovely co-host, the man I refer to as Vanna White. It is P.S. Melter. God. From Misfit <laughs> Corner Comics, the one, the only, fingerless gloved Andrew Charper. Thank you, thank you. Coming to us live and direct all the way from the country of Malaysia. It is the exotic Muir. Much like Madonna, he only has the one name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> from Cross Comics, drawing tonight is Rowdy Rick Piper. Yeah! I like that. And from <laughs> Pencil for Life, the stunningly, breathtakingly original Brad Ashworth. Joining up, me babes? with some special guest commentary, the lovely lady with the green hair. It is my close personal friend, General John Wallace. I love you, beautiful people. Mwah. Tonight, as I've said, the subject is Hulk Hogan. Now that means it can be any Hulk Hogan you want. It can be Sterling Golden. It can be the Hulkster brother and Mania with Hulkamania running wild, brother. It can be Thunder in Paradise. It can be Thunder Lips. It can be Mr. Nanny. It can be the Suburban Commando. It can be the biggest icon in wrestling. Hollywood Hulk Hogan from the NWO. So I'm just going to tell these gentlemen that they have two hours they have the right to use up to two colors. Now start your engines. You may draw. Now I'm pretty excited for tonight. I'm excited to see uh, some people watching here this evening. I am curious oh, yeah. to see uh, anyone uh, in the chat who wants to tell us what their favorite version of Hulk Hogan is. I am watching the chat. Because we're going to see what everyone is drawing tonight. I'm curious to see which version of Hulk Hogan they've all chosen. Go oh, yeah, your favorite Hulk Hogan version of Hulk Hogan, John Wallace? My favorite version, of course, is the NWO Hulk Hogan, because that was just like the time where WCW, they were kicking WWE's behind in ratings because of NWO. Until they started adding most of the roster in the NWO, then, you know, <laughs> down the hill. But yeah, I love Hollywood Hulk Hogan, you know, the black, the white, you know, it just seemed like more badass, you know? I like that badass villain uh, personality he had. Did you like it when Stevie Ray formed the NWO B team? No. That? that was kind of all downhill. Yeah, I, I didn't like that one. I liked it better when it was Hogan Hall and Nash, especially when they came back to the WWE itself, Hogan Hall and Nash, before that whole debacle yeah, took off. Was... It was just, you know, it made you want to get off your feet and, like, cheer, like, you know, especially yeah. when you had Hollywood Hulk Hogan versus The Rock, WrestleMania 18, that was... You know, that whole, they both got a standing ovation, and people didn't know who to cheer for that night. It was beautiful. The match was beautiful. Storytelling was beautiful. I was excited for the whole thing. We have a lot of people who are talking very dirty in the chat about their favorite Hulk Hogan. I'm not going to say which video of Hulk Hogan is their favorite. I'm sure you guys can Yeah, we're imagine. not going to go there. Oh, yeah. We're not going to go there. We're not going to talk about sponges and stuff. Not nice, not nice, wink, wink. Nope, no, no, no talk of sponges this evening. Nope. He's a he's a dirty bastard for that actually that that bubble yeah. little sponge. Yep. Turn on turn on his tonight. friend like that. Yep. You said the name. Uh, money, yeah. money, money corrupts. Money will make you turn on your friends. And we might have uh, another artist or two pop in here and start drawing. You know, they might they might do a run in, so to speak. Now, P.S. Melter, nice. what's your favorite version of Hulk Hogan? P.S. Melter. Well, to be honest, like you know. It's hard to say. I always liked him when he was the good guy when he first started out when he was in the uh, red and yellow. Once he came out with the NWO, he was a you know a whole different guy. But he was the one of those guys when he did that. He kind of made it cool to be a bad guy, mm -hmm. and that was really cool with the whole NWO stuff. I thought it kind of like dropped and floundered when he finally uh, came back to the WWE and uh, then brought back the red and yellow after turning on the NWO. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say between Hollywood and early Hogan, 
I'd probably go with you know the original uh, Immortal Hulk Hogan because it's hard to top stuff like slamming Andre, the match with uh, Savage and Five, you know, going against the Warrior, um, you know, against you know the nat- the then turned uh, Iraqi sympathizer, um, um, uh, 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 Slaughter. Slaughter, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Those stuff were great. Your friendly neighborhood ninja, do you have a favorite Hulk Hogan? All of them. All of them, brother. Because Hulkster embodies what wrestling really was, at least in my opinion. Uh, I've enjoyed Hulkster. He was my favorite as a kid growing up. Um, You know, he had a good message. Train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. You know, he was a good guy, that Hulkster. Even when he was in the NWO, that was hilarious. Yeah, it was awesome. He was just like the best heel ever. My favorite Hulk Hogan is obviously uh, the Hulk Hogan in Three Ninjas High Noon at Megaton Mountain. Oh, yeah. I actually have that. <laughs> yeah. on VHS, brother. My second favorite Hulk Hogan would be the Hulk Hogan in Thunder in Paradise with Jack Lemon, or excuse me, with Chris Lemon, <laughs> the son of Jack Lemon. <laughs> My least favorite Hulk Hogan would be the TNA Hulk Hogan for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, you know what? Like, uh, you know, my fa- one of my favorite Hogans is the one that everyone's forgotten about, which was when Vince Russo was in uh, was running WCW for that that hot minute, and uh, he put Hogan in the feud with Billy Kidman, and Kidman's just like walking around, or I mean, Hogan's walking around in the back, just looking for where's that little son of a bitch at? Where you at? Because <laughs> he was little. <laughs> for those of you just tuning in on the panel this evening is let me just go ahead and, and turn them on here your friendly neighborhood ninja drawing yep. some version of Hulk Hogan we'll find out as we go along here P.S. Melter also drawing a version of Hulk Hogan we'll figure out which one as we go along here Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics go subscribe to him if you are a comic book fan he doesn't normally draw professional wrestlers he normally draws comic books we also have my man in malaysia the one the only mior i'm very excited to see what he's going to bring some sort of international flair to his hulk hogan this evening not drawing at all my uh my guest commentator here this evening general john wallace oh yeah love it oh yeah brother. canada's own rowdy rick piper from cross comics oh yeah where are you at in Canada, Rick? I am near Toronto. I'm in Hamilton, Ontario. Oh, about Hamilton. About an hour away from, about an hour away from Toronto. For uh, yes, so Hamilton is the home know. of uh, of Pepper Martin, who is a professional wrestler who was very, very famous on the West Coast uh, throughout the 1960s. But he is probably best known as Rocky, the truck driver who beat up Clark Kent in the diner in Superman Two. Ooh, oh, I, did, I, did not, I did not know that. Oh, yes. cool. I did not know that. See, you learn something new every day. I did not know that. Last but not least is Brad Ashworth from Pencil for Life, another excellent channel you should definitely subscribe to if you like comic books. Manny has not made it in here yet. Manny is going to do a run-in. He's going to uh, apparently come in with some brass knuckles. He's going to bust Brad open and put him out. Sure, and right. I'm expecting Brad will return. Uh, with some, with his with his head taped up, you know, blood gushing, and he's going to come back for the big win. He's going to uh, save these other guys. He ain't knocking me out. We'll see. We'll, we'll see, see what Manny, happens. Manny's dirty, dirty fighter. He'll come in, hit you with that wrench. Oh yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll speak uh, he, he's going to. He's got yeah, those he four. Took everybody's ren- he took everybody's wrenches away. That's right. <laughs> That's now, Roddy right. Rick Piper from Brad Cross Comics this evening. Roddy Rick Piper from Cross Comics. It sounds like you are a big wrestling fan. Like you might have a favorite Hulk Hogan of your own. Oh yeah, definitely classic eighties, nineties, the superhero type era of wrestling. You were a little Hulkamaniac, were you? Yeah, I was for the Hulk stuff. Yeah, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, and all that. This, okay, okay. Him and Mister T were good friends. That. Oh, yes. Yeah. I wonder if anyone yeah. will end up drawing him with Mr. T this evening on a classic yeah. combination. Mr. T and Hulk Hogan taking on Roddy Roddy Piper, and my good friend, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, at the very first WrestleMania. 
He also appeared in a few episodes of the A Team. He did. Too. Yes, there were a couple episodes of the A Team. Uh, really? Those are out there. Um, one of them is called Body Slam, and I can't recall the name of the other one. Hmm. There was also an excellent, an absolutely excellent episode of Baywatch, which you can actually watch on uh, my Facebook page, youtube.com forward slash legit pro wrestling, the home of Portland wrestling. Yes, I have uploaded an episode of Baywatch. Shh, don't tell. It stars, hmm. uh, it stars Ric Flair, Vader, Big Van Vader, the Macho Man, Hulk Hogan, and a cavalcade of other characters from World Championship Wrestling. And it is definitely worth a watch. And you know it's good because it starts with Hogan and Mach having a jet ski competition with each other. Oh, man, that sounds amazing. <laughs> it, it, it truly is. That sounds it truly is. You know, speaking of favorite Hulk Hogan moments, I just want to put this out there. That Going back to when the NWO came to WWE, that moment where Hulk Hogan went back to the Hollywood and he teamed up with The Rock and Kane that night to go against, uh, you know, uh, I think it was Hall, Nash, and uh, somebody else. And uh, Rock was talking about how scary Kane is and Kane came to the room. And Rock was like, uh, yeah, Kane, you ready? He's like, yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? And then before the Rock could answer, <laughs> Kane was like, it doesn't matter if you're ready. He started giving that whole Hulk, uh, Hulk Hogan type speech. Uh, like, yeah, we got the, the people. He's like, we got the people, the Hulkamaniacs and the Canaanites. And he, <laughs> then he went to that whole thing said, what you going to do with the Rock, Hulk Hogan, and Kane running around on you? And he did the whole motions and poses. Then he went back to being Kane like, see you in the ring. Oh, yo, I swear, I was laughing for 10 minutes straight. After Kane did that promo, because you never expected Kane to be that funny. Like, because I was literally drinking some Pepsi and eating some pizza, and like, I spit like half the bottle of Pepsi out, laughing at Kane doing that. And I always go back to YouTube to watch that moment, and I still get a kick out of it. Mior, tell us about professional wrestling in Malaysia. What are your experiences with professional wrestling down there? Oh, wow. Uh, I, I think one of the, uh, the biggest, uh, the, uh, the biggest, um, wrestling show that that were in Malaysia during my time was probably uh, Smackdown okay uh, Smackdown and raw if I'm not mistaken uh, yeah I think those two are pretty big but a lot of a lot of the stuff before that were obscure to us uh, were very uh, were very uh, obscure uh, obscure to a lot of Malaysians so uh, that's why um, that's why for me Hollywood Hogan is probably the only version of of Hogan that I am that I'm familiar with, because I think I think that's the only version that that we ever get to saw that, that we ever get to saw here in Malaysia. Okay, okay, very interesting. I know Brad Ashworth doesn't give a crap about professional wrestling, but he's kind enough to join us and draw because he's that confident <laughs> of his abilities. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's it's true though. It's true. Well, While no, wrestling okay. was big so in the eighties, I watched 80s. wrestling when I was a kid. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't like in the nineties. I just, yeah, I was didn't do it. So I just kind of fell away from it. I, I used to watch Tonight. it on Saturdays, though. Yeah, so. same here. What? Now I do want to point out that right now, at this very moment, in the chat is uh, Good Dog Press Kanaka Maole, and uh, he is saying, "I see a bunch of big mouth lightweights in that ring." Why would I waste my time on these wannabes? You have mid cars all over the place. Trying to be a John Dillard, huh? All right, whatever. Well, here's the thing, though, is he does have the link uh, available to him on YouTube. But you know, I told you guys, he's waiting. He's going to do a run, and he's going to bust Brad open with the brass knucks. Brad's going to be carried out on the stretcher, and Manny's just going to be just about ready to win. And Brad's going to come back out for revenge with his head taped up. He's going to take. He's going to take Good Dog Press out. Okay. So he's going. He's going to pull Brock Lesnar. Well, uh, honestly, Good Dog Press is uh, he is the champion. He won last week the Mean Gene competition. And only because I wasn't here. Means nothing to me, brother. <laughs> so I don't know if he's afraid to defend his title or, or what it is. But if he doesn't get in here and defend his title, then, us, brother. then he's going to oh, be stripped yeah, yeah. of the belt. Uh, there's a question. Since this is a wrestling drawing thing, and since everybody gets, I guess, man, he's got the belt now. Do they have to defend it every so often? Oh, well, I would say you have idea. to defend each and every week. If not, then you know you get stripped of the belt. Yeah, exactly. you better get in here, brother. 
Oh, he says Brad is just a little chihuahua. Brad is a very, very big <laughs> chihuahua. <laughs> Sorry, he, called a rumble, he called a rumble terrier. Because <laughs> what there, is there, it? That's it's a little like about that. me, buddy. In You're so jipping. The what? Every three Jip months or something like that, you have to defend the belt. Oh, I think it depends on uh, which company you work for. I think in the National Wrestling Alliance, you must defend the title every 30 days. Okay, well, I'm thinking WWF. WWF, in, it's probably just 90 days, yeah. I know that in you know in WCW, Hogan defended the belt like once every four to six months. So I think it all depends on who has the belt. But, you know, people didn't come to watch Hogan wrestle. They came to watch him, uh, you know, talk. Well, I mean, if you're John Cena, you defend it like every every night on Raw, you know, the open challenge. Yeah, yeah. Don't we don't talk about John Cena on this channel? What's wrong with Cena? No, he says he will not appear with that traitor Canadian Arnold in here. Oh, Ooh, you mean you mean the Terminator, the real Arnold? Well, I mean, speaking of John Cena, a lot of people, and myself, and people I know. They consider uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson the second generation Hulk Hogan. Considered John Cena a third generation Hulk Hogan because of the you know the mic skills and the per yeah. the presence. Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and say that that's all dictated by ticket sales. Uh, you know, Hogan is who he is because of ticket sales. The Rock and Stone Cold are who they are because of ticket sales. Uh, John Cena, yeah, the, where's the ticket sales to back that up? He definitely, you know, like here's the interesting thing Wait, is movie like ticket sales or ticket sales for. Wrestling, wrestling ticket sales. Well, you uh, make your wrestling. money off of merchandise and ticket sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, John Cena has definitely kept the WWE afloat because he appeals to little little boys. But at the end of the day, they lost a huge. You know, you got to think back in the 1990s, they were getting, you know, sixes and sevens in the ratings, and now they get twos and threes. So basically, they lost half the audience. And uh, why they did that, you know, uh, I think that there's there's a lot of, you know, that's a whole conversation you could have about a lot of the missteps that they've taken. One would be they don't have the territory system that we had, in, you know, prior to the 1990s, back when the, mm -hmm. the National Wrestling Alliance existed and there was wrestling, you know, in every single state, pretty much. And so you had all this talent to draw from and talent was able to travel around and work with other talent and get really seasoned very well and learn different styles of wrestling. Now you don't have that. You have, oh, there's probably like six really good trainers uh, in North America today that you can go to. and But those trainers don't have a territory where you're wrestling every night of the week. You know, if you're an independent wrestler, just, a you know, an average independent wrestler, you're lucky if you get to wrestle – Three times a month, you're lucky. Um, let alone, you know, you got to remember back then a guy would wrestle seven days a week. Some guys were, you know, if you were a top draw, you were wrestling eight times a week because they'd have a matinee on, you know, a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon, and then they'd have an evening show in town two hours away. Hmm. And so wrestlers were really able to get seasoned up, and, you know, you just had this huge pool of talent to draw from. And when Vince took all of the best talent, it basically shut down these other promotions and these other promotions are partially to blame. You know, you got to remember all these old promoters in the NWA were 60, 70, 80 year old men. And they were used to doing this business one way. And they had had it. They basically had monopolies. They had agreements with each other that they wouldn't compete with one another. And that's how the territories came into be. They carved up the, they carved up North America and everybody had their territory. And if another, uh, if like another wrestler would try to open a rival promotion in that territory, Basically, the NWA promoters would blackball wrestlers who went and worked for the rival. So you couldn't start an outlaw promotion without the threat of being blackballed forever. And uh, and when Vince McMahon decided, you know, when Vince bought the territory, his, his father owned, you know, the New York, Pennsylvania territory. And when Vinny Jr. bought that, he, you know, bought it with the intent to expand globally. Because he saw the benefits of videotape, VHS. And his father probably would have never sold it to him if he'd known what he was going to do. Because those were all his dad's friends and he'd get calls from his dad's friends, you know. What's your kid doing? He's friggin' killing us. And Jim Ross, good old JR from WWE Monday Night Raw, he uh, tells the story about when he was first coming up in the business. He was at an NWA uh, meeting. You know, they'd have these big meetings once a year in a different state. 
and he was in the bathroom. He's in the bathroom, and all the promoters walked in there and started to have a conversation about whether they should just go ahead and have Vince murdered, just kill him and throw him in a river. Oh, just you did? Business. Serious? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Jim Ross says, you know, I was sitting there on the toilet, and, you know, it was just one of those situations where I just lifted my legs up so they couldn't see me under the stall door. And that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, he didn't that's, want to be next. That's that's, yeah, that's right. Wait, they seriously talked about killing this man Jr.? They, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to understand, yeah. back then, um, they would have the, the heels and the faces, the good guys and the bad guys, always separate. And yeah, you wouldn't want to be caught dead breaking what they called, you know, kayfabe, which was, you know, you know, you know, keeping it pretend or whatever you want to call it, keeping it look legit like they'd seen the, the arena. So when they would do that or someone would get caught breaking kayfabe, that could cost them, I don't know, maybe a, a broken broken body part or something or worse. Really? They would yeah, get you wouldn't have to wrestle then. That's crazy. Mm. They they'd probably do it outside or 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 quote unquote oops I accidentally dropped you when I was supposed to hit you with a power bomb. Well every uh well they didn't do power bombs back then but uh, every every territory had what you'd call a policeman, which is a guy that really knew how to shoot. They'd be called shooters, or the really deadly wrestlers were called hookers because they could hook you in a hold and cripple you. They understood joint manipulation, mm. and so if you uh if you didn't want to you know do what you were told in the ring, those hookers would take care of you and you'd, uh, you were basically going to sell whether you liked it or not. So we can either do this the easy way and you can make this look like we're having a real match. And if you got a problem with that and you want to act like a hot shot, you know, we're just going to break your arm, tear a muscle, whatever we feel like doing to you. And I mean, those guys were, I mean, you're talking, to, I mean, you're talking about guys who, if it was today, all the, all these guys would be in the, the UFC today. Because that's where the money is, and they know how to shoot. We've got yeah, exactly. some, uh, some all, we've got some small time uh, wrestling stuff around here in Hamilton. I haven't been to any of them, but every so every few months I see something on a post nearby saying, uh, you know, a small time wrestling federation or whatever you want to call it. I haven't been, like I said, I haven't been to any matches. I thought about going, though. Figured it might be like old school wrestling, <laughs> not like the stuff today. Good Dog Press says that Rick will draw whatever no one wants to see. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's sort so of fun. Brutal. That's, a, that's, right. that's sort of right, hard, right. man. <clears throat> you know that's what's going to end up happening here, brother? It's going to be me. It's going to be Brad. It's gonna be good, good, good dog press. We're gonna create a stable, and then we're gonna run wild all over you. All right, brother. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, you know, uh, the family man stable. feel free to shit talk as much as you want. It's a wrestling stream. Ninja, I do want to say on. that he also is referring to you as one of the lazy, out of shape housewives on the panel. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Manny, Ooh. you just made a powerful enemy, brother. See, it's gonna be. A little bit hard to draw what nobody wants when we're all supposed to be drawing Hogan. And they're all here to see well, Hogan. I think you're referring to Vince McMahon because right now Vince is drawing a lot what people don't want to see. Ninja, why'd you turn your camera off, buddy? <laughs> because I have to keep this one a surprise. If I give it away, because if I, you know, I didn't actually announce to the public which Ho Hogan I'm doing. Well, no one announced to the public which Hogan on? they're doing. We just we just kind of have to guess as we on? go through it. Because it this be a serious guess then. Well, well everybody else has theirs on. What are you chicken shit? All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fine. I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, like Manny would probably tell you, you know, you should prepare the people for how bad the art's going to be. Oh, so geez. they're not surprised and shocked when when it when you turn the camera on at the end. All right then, I'll play with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. It's fine. Okay, let's take a look at what Ninja's got going on here. Oh my gosh! Okay, so I think, I think that this is going to be Hulk Hogan in Suburban Commando. A very bold choice. Very bold choice. I like it. I like it, Ninja. You might be. You might. You might win my vote, man. Oh, you've got the cod piece down for sure. Let's see what's going on. PS Melter. Okay, well we've got some dandruff. 
Oh, look at this. We've got a <laughs> Mr. Mr. Nanny. If you remember that movie. That's one of E. Ortiz's favorites in the chat there. You know, he loves Mr. Nanny. Falls asleep to it every night. It's oh, like Ambi. Uh, Argos Creation says, uh, yeah. if Brad was a professional wrestler, his nickname would be Brad, no pencil for wife, Ashworth. Took him a long time to think bring that out. Brother, bring it. Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics is drawing the classic Hulk Hogan tearing the shirt. I really like it. No bear. No bear. Yeah, I one. was going to ask you guys if you ever fought a bear, but I decided going I to I thought that maybe world. you were going to draw him as a bear. Well, I thought about that too, but you know, I'm respecting the the, the spirit of the whole thing, you know. What's amazing is you're so fast. You're so incredibly fast that you could probably just be done and just sit around on the top turnbuckle for an hour just mocking these other guys. Mm -mm -mm. So speaking of which, you know, watching uh, some of those oldies Hulk Hogan matches, one of my favorite promos against Hogan was that one, that airplane one that, uh, what's the name, that um, Ultimate Warrior did. That was hilarious. Ultimate Warrior did? What? Remember uh, Ultimate Warrior versus Hogan and uh, Ultimate Warrior did that, that airplane promo when he said uh, the flight to WrestleMania, he's going to crash in the parts unknown. Oh, and he's like, yes, he's I like, do. Yeah, he's like, I checked the two pilots who already made the sacrifice, Hulk Hogan. He said, shut the plane door, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> like, as you crash in the parts unknown. I totally still days, That's an man. infamous I, I, warrior promo. All of the Ultimate Warriors promos are legendary because they made no sense whatsoever. They made no sense. But what He's I do want to tell you, General John Wallace, is when we're done with Drawing Blood, if you want to, you can actually watch the Ultimate Warriors feature film debut. It is called Firepower, starring the Ultimate Warrior, and it is available right here on my YouTube channel, Testosterone Overload. Been watched Ooh. by about 36,000 other people. Who absolutely loved how incredibly bad it was. <laughs> the Ultimate Warrior, man, he was just full of energy. You know, ran down to the ring, slammed somebody, ran out the ring. You know, that guy, I got to love that guy. But, you know, Hogan, Hogan was definitely the money draw back then. He was definitely speaking, the money draw. Speaking of Warrior and Hogan, let's talk about Halloween Havoc. Let's talk about Hogan burning his facial hair and his face off. <laughs> oh god that was that was so bad okay so they had a um, um okay hulk hogan and and warrior fought what was it wrestlemania six or seven and uh then they both so hogan went to wcw he was hollywood hogan warrior finally came and he called himself own one warrior nation and Terrible. uh they had that stupid thing yeah, yeah. And they ended up having so a bad. uh they had a one match, and it was at Howlin' Havoc, and it, everything that was supposed to happen right went wrong. I guess the end of it was supposed to be, or close to the end of it, was supposed to be Hogan was going to light a fireball and throw it in the eyes of the Warrior, and the Warrior was going to be blind for the rest of the match. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it didn't go that well, and instead of throwing it at him, uh, it exploded in his face. That's so right. it exploded in Hogan's face. Since off his eyebrows, his mustache, and everything, and he was blind and bleeding, so they had to change the whole end of the match. Um, can't even remember how the match really ended. Was it like a steel chair to the back or something? It was just, it was just horrible. Well, I'm just going to read a little bit about Hulk Hogan since we've got some uh, time here. Uh, you well, gentlemen yeah, have plenty it, of time left. Plenty of time. Terry Jean Belia, better known by his ring name, Hulk Hogan, is an American retired pro wrestler, actor, television personality, entrepreneur, and musician. According to IGN, Hogan is the most recognized wrestling star worldwide and the most popular wrestler of the 1980s. He enjoyed considerable mainstream popularity between 1984 and 1993 as a heroic character in the WWF, which continued during the to the mid-1990s in world championship wrestling until 1996 when he became a villain, leading the New World Order faction. So I'm going to tell you his life story, basically. Terry Eugene nice. Bolia was born in Augusta, Georgia, on August 11, 1953, the son of construction foreman Pietro Peter Bolia and homemaker and dance teacher Ruth V. Bolia. 
He is of French, Italian, Panamanian, and Scottish descent. When he was one and a half years old, his family moved to Port Tampa, Florida. As a boy, he was a pitcher in Little League Baseball. He attracted scouts from the New York Yankees and the Cincinnati Reds, but an injury ended his baseball career. He began watching professional wrestling at 16 years old. While in high school, he revered Dusty Rhodes, and he regularly attended cards at the Tampa Sportatorium. It was at one of these wrestling cards where he first turned his attention towards superstar Billy Graham and looked to him for inspiration. Since he first saw Graham on TV, Hogan wanted to match his inhuman look. Hogan was also a musician, spending a decade playing fretless bass guitar in several Florida-based rock bands. He went on to study at Hillsborough Community College and the University of South Florida. After musical gigs began to get in the way of his time in college, Hogan decided to drop out of the University of South Florida before receiving a degree. Eventually, Hogan and two local musicians formed a band called Ruckus in 1976. The band soon became popular in the Tampa Bay region. During his spare time, Hogan worked out at Hector's Gym in the Tampa Bay area, where he began lifting. Many of the wrestlers who were competing in the Florida region visited the bars where Ruckus was performing. Among those attending his performances were Jack and Gerald Briscoe, two brothers who wrestled together as a tag team in the Florida region. Impressed by Hogan's physical stature, the Briscoe brothers asked Hiro Matsuda, the man who trained wrestlers for championship wrestling from Florida, to make him a potential trainee. In 1976, the two brothers asked Hogan to try wrestling. Hogan eventually agreed. At first, however, Mike Graham, the son of, C uh, the, the son of Florida promoter Eddie Graham, refused to put Hogan in the ring. According to Hogan, he met Graham while in high school, and the two did not get along. However, after Hogan quit Ruckus and started telling people in town that he was going to be a wrestler, Graham finally agreed to accept the Briscoe brothers' career. In mid-1977, after training for more than a year with Hiro Matsuda, the Briscoe brothers dropped by Matsuda's gym to see Hogan. During this visit, Jack Briscoe handed Hogan a pair of wrestling boots and informed him that he was scheduled to wrestle his first match the following week. In his professional wrestling debut, Eddie Graham booked him against Brian Blair in Fort Myers, Florida on August 10, 1977. A short time later, Blair donned a mask and assumed the persona of the Super Destroyer a hooded character first played by Don Jardine and subsequently used by other wrestlers. Hogan eventually could no longer work with Hiro Matsuda, whom he felt was an overbearing trainer, and left Florida. After declining an offer to wrestle for the Kansas City circuit, Hogan took a hiatus from wrestling and managed the Anchor Club, a private club in Cocoa Beach, Florida, for a man named Whitey Bridges. Eventually, Whitey and Hogan became close friends and decided to open a gym together. The gym became known as Whitey and Terry's Olympic Gym. Soon after, Hogan's friend Ed Leslie, later known as Brutus the Barber Beefcake, came to Cocoa Beach to help Hogan and Bridges manage both the Anchor Club and the Olympic Gym. In his spare time, he and Leslie worked out in the gym together, and eventually Beefcake developed a muscular physique. Hogan was impressed by Beefcake's physical stature and became convinced that the two of them should wrestle together as tag team partners. Depressed and yearning to return to wrestling, Hogan called superstar Billy Graham in 1978 with hopes that Graham could find him a job wrestling outside of Florida. Graham agreed, and Hogan soon joined Louis Tillett's Alabama territory. Hogan also convinced Leslie, who had yet to become a wrestler, to come with him and promised to teach him everything he knew about the sport. In Alabama, Belia and Leslie wrestled as Terry and Ed Boulder, known as the Boulder Brothers. These early matches as a tag team, with the surname Boulder being used by both men, prompted a rumor among wrestling fans unaware of the inner workings of the sport that Hogan and Leslie were brothers, as few people actually knew their real names outside of immediate friends, family, and the various promoters the two worked for. After a wrestling show for, excuse me, after a wrestling show for Continental Wrestling Association in Memphis, Jerry Jarrett, the promoter for the CWA, approached Hogan and Leslie and offered them a job in his promotion for $800 a week. This was far more than the $175 a week they would make working for Tillett. Hogan and Leslie accepted his offer and left Tillett's territory. During his time in Memphis, Hogan appeared on a local talk show where he sat beside Lou Ferrigno, star of the television series The Incredible Hulk. The host commented on how Hogan, who stood 6 foot 7 inches and weighed 295 pounds with 24 inch biceps, actually dwarfed the Hulk. Watching the show backstage, Mary Jarrett noticed that Hogan was actually bigger than Ferrigno, who was well known at the time for having large muscles. As a result, as a result, 
Bollea began performing as Terry the Hulk Boulder and sometimes wrestled as Sterling Golden. On December 1st, 1979, Bollea won his first professional wrestling championship, the NWA Southeastern Heavyweight Championship, recognized in Alabama and Tennessee when he defeated Bob Roop in Knoxville. Bollea would drop the title in January 1980 to Bob Armstrong. Bollea briefly wrestled in the Georgia Championship Wrestling Territory from September through December of 1979 as Sterling Golden. Later that year, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Terry Funk introduced Bollea to the company owner and promoter of WWF, Vincent J. McMahon, who was impressed with his charisma and physical stature. McMahon, who wanted to use an Irish name, gave Bollea the last name Hogan and also wanted him to dye his hair red. Hogan claims his hair was already beginning to fall out by that time, and he refused to dye it, simply replying, I'll be a blonde Irish. Hogan wrestled his first match in the WWF on November 17th, defeating Harry Valdez on Championship Wrestling. He made his first appearance at Madison Square Garden, defeating Ted DiBiase after a bear hug. After the match, Hogan thanked DiBiase for putting him over and told him that he owed him one, a favor that he would end up repaying during DiBiase's second run with the company in the late 1980s and early 90s as the Million Dollar Man. McMahon gave Hogan former tag team champion Tony Altamere as chaperone and guide. At this time, Hogan wrestled Bob Backlund for the WWF Heavyweight Championship, and he started his first feud with Andre the Giant, which culminated in a match with Andre at Shea Stadium in August of 1980. During his initial run as a villain in the WWF, Hogan was paired with Classy Freddie Blassie, a wrestler-turned-manager. In 1980, Hogan began appearing in New Japan Pro Wrestling, where Japanese wrestling fans nicknamed him Ichiban, which translates to number one. Hogan first appeared on May 13, 1980, while he was still with the WWF. He occasionally toured the country over the next few years, facing a wide variety of opponents, ranging from Tatsumi Fujinami to Abdullah the Butcher. When competing in Japan, Hogan used a vastly different repertoire of wrestling moves, relying on more technical traditional wrestling holds and maneuvers as opposed to the power-based brawling style American fans became accustomed to seeing from him. In addition, Hogan used the Axe Bomber, a crooked arm lariat, as his finisher in Japan instead of the running leg drop that has been his standard finisher in America. Hogan still made appearances for the WWF, even unsuccessfully challenging Pedro Morales for the Intercontinental Championship on March 26, 1981. On June 2, 1983, Hogan became the first International Wrestling Grand Prix champion uh, by winning a tournament, defeating Antonio Inoki by knockout in the finals of the 10-man tournament. Hogan and Inoki also worked as partners in Japan, winning the MSG Tag League tournament two years in a row in 82 and 83. In 1984, Hogan returned to New Japan to wrestle Inoki in the finals of the IWGP League, in which he lost the title belt by countout, thanks to interference from Ricky Choshu. Hogan also defended his WWF World Heavyweight Championship against Seiji Sakaguchi and Fujinami, among others, until ending his tour in Nagoya on June 13th with a countout to Inoki. Excuse me. After filming his scene for Rocky III against the Elder McMahon's wishes, Hogan made his debut in the American Wrestling Association, owned by Vern Gagne. Hogan started his AWA run as a villain, taking on luscious Johnny Valiant as his manager. This did not last for long, as the AWA fans fell in love with Hogan's presence, and Hogan became the top fan favorite of the AWA, battling the Heenan family and Nick Bockwinkle. Hogan's turn as a fan favorite came to an end, July of 1981, when during a television taping that aired in August, Jerry Blackwell, after suffering a pinfall loss to Brad Reagans, began beating down Reagans and easily fighting off anyone who tried to run in for the save. However, Hogan ran in, got the upper hand, and ran Blackwell from the ring. Hogan was eventually victorious in his feud with Blackwell and by the end of 1981 gained his first title matches against Bockwinkle. After purchasing the WWF from his father in 1982, Vincent Kennedy McMahon had plans to expand the territory into a nationwide product promotion, and he handpicked Hogan to be the company's showpiece, showpiece attraction due to his charisma and name recognition. Hogan made his return at a television taping in St. Louis, Missouri, on December 27, 1983, defeating Bill Dixon. 
On the January 7th, 1984 episode of Championship Wrestling, Hogan confirmed his fan favorite status for the WWF fans by saving Bob Backlund from a three-way assault by the Wild Samoans. Hogan's turn was explained simply by Backlund. He's changed his ways. He's a great man. He's told me he's not going to have Blassie around. The storyline shortcut was necessary because less than three weeks later, on January 23rd, Hogan won his first WWF World Heavyweight Championship, pinning the Iron Sheik in Madison Square Garden. The storyline accompanying the victory was that Hogan was a last-minute replacement for the Sheik's original opponent, Bob Backlund, and became the champion by way of being the first man to escape the camel clutch, the Iron Sheik's finishing move. The backstage story was that then-champion Bob Backlund had refused to let Hogan win the title from him, demanding that any wrestler to whom he lost the title have a legitimate wrestling background. As a consequence, the Iron Sheik won the title from Backlund first, and then dropped it to Hogan. However, this was mostly made to not make two fan favorites face each other. Immediately after the title win, commentator Gorilla Monsoon proclaimed, Hulkamania is here. And the rest is history. Well, that was beautiful, man. Yeah, I mean, we could go into it all, but I think we all know the story. You know what? They, they should seriously hire you to do stuff like that for them as far as, like, telling wrestlers' background and history. Because the way you just said that, you articulated it perfectly. And I could see you doing, like, like DVD commentary on various wrestlers. No, I needed out. to drink so bad through that whole thing, too. <laughs> yeah, well, you have a drink, I'll tell you a good one. Um, mm. He's talked about Hulk Hogan in Japan. After Hogan um, came and did the whole Hulkamania thing in WWE, they still had a few contract stuff going on with New Japan for wrestling. And one of the things they did was they put their champion, which was Hulk Hogan at the time, who was on his way out for the final time just before he lost it to Yokozuna, uh, um, against the great Muda. And uh, it was a great champion versus champion match. Um, after it was said and done, Hogan did, said in a press release after it was over that uh, calling the WWF World Heavyweight Championship belt nothing but a toy. And the real belt was the, uh, the IWGP Championship belt that I'm Muda had. And he won that belt. And, that, and then not too long after that, Hogan lost his title. And then went over to WCW a little later. Of course, it wasn't right then, of course, because he, he did try to transition into a movie star, TV star. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that was actually a really great match because, like you said, Hogan had a different move set than we knew him as. He, he did... It's like, that's the only time I've ever seen Hulk Hogan jump up and do a running in Siguri. Hey, well, I mean... Move. Sorry. Yeah, it's like if you know, if you don't know what that is, that's like a the cruiserweight move where you just jump up and kick somebody in the side of their head with your leg. It's yeah, not I'm a big guys do. If you know, anyone else uh, here on the panel or listening doesn't know what that is, yeah, it only it's only a chosen few big guys could do an insegiri, let alone a running insegiri. It's actually you know yeah. agile like that. But I mean, what, what Hogan said was controversy to to Vince McMahon, but. It actually is, if you think about it, because if you look at New Japan today and the, the the G1 tournament and all the stuff, you know, all the stuff they go through for that belt, the IWGP Championship is a legendary belt, and you know they they go for some pretty long, long-winded, hard matches in that that G1 tournament to get you know that spot in the uh, Wrestle Kingdom to fight the fight for that belt. And I mean, they're way more grueling than anything you see in WWE. Yeah, and, and think about it, Hogan never won that belt. But there are only a few people in the WWE that has won that belt that has also became WWE champion. And exactly. two of them are in the company right now. Brock Lesnar is one of them. Mm -hmm. AJ Styles is the other one. Yep. To give you guys a little bit more stats on Hulk Hogan, other than being an IWGP heavyweight champion, he was a six-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion a six-time WWF World Heavyweight Champion. He won two Royal Rumbles and held one WWE Tag Team Championship with Edge. He is also a uh, WWE, in, uh, was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2005 and the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, which is in Wichita Falls, Texas, in 2003.
Pro Wrestling Illustrated, the leading magazine covering professional wrestling, gave Hogan Feud of the Year in 1986 for his feud with Paul Orndorff. He was the Inspirational Wrestler of the Year in 1983 and 1999. He was a four-time Match of the Year winner, uh, first in '85 for his match with Roddy, or excuse me, with Mr. T against Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff at WrestleMania One. 1988 against Andre the Giant. 1990 against the Ultimate Warrior, and 2002 against The Rock. He was he was nominated Most Popular Wrestler of the Year in 1985, 1989, and 1990. He was Most Hated Wrestler of the Year in 1996 and 1998. He was PWI Wrestler of the Year in 1987, 1991, and 1994, as well as being ranked number one in the PWI 500 in 91 and 2003. Pretty yeah, impressive. Well, uh, yeah, that's very impressive, actually. You know, you know why he was a uh, hated, most hated wrestler of the year in 1998? Because, because of that whole because that pinfall thing where uh, he got poked in, his, in the, the, what, the chest by Kevin Nash and they got that quick ass pin in. Oh, yeah, that was terrible. You know, that was terrible. The, the, yeah, the finger poke of doom. Let's that's why he was voted most hated that year. Let's take a look and see uh, and see what's going on here with all these drawings. Your friendly neighborhood ninjas. Oh, we're getting some feedback from somebody, I think. But your friendly neighborhood ninja really has his suburban commando down. It's looking really good. My boy Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics is rocking this Hulk Hogan at the height of Hulkamania, tearing that shirt. That's right. Tia Melter has sure. got some serious yeah. dandruff going on in that hair. Oh no, there it is. Never mind. His uh, his always comedic style, looking really good for the Mister Nanny Hulk Hogan. I'm not sure what's going on with Mior right now. He's hiding out. It's very secretive. No, I, no. Actually, my computer's being an ass again. I, I might need to. Uh, I might need to restart my computer. Uh, uh oh. Oh, uh, delay a save, game. Save, save there, it now. The, This is not the round style like you get in wrestling in England. This is uh, there. There are no rounds here, me or no timeouts in wrestling. <laughs> Cross Comics is uh, got his little Hulk Hogan going on here, putting in that mustache right now. Yeah. Brad Ashworth yeah, is uh, doing a very very compelling piece. This is uh some really good Hogan. Like I'm thinking like this is maybe right after Hogan returned to WWE. It's kind of hard to tell how old he is yet in this image, but I'm thinking this is Hogan right after he left WCW and returned to the WWE and, and made the big face turn back to Hulkamania brothers. Uh, but we're going to find out for sure. Combining two of them. You're combining two of them. Yeah. Wow. Very original. Very original. You know, I like that. Oh, when he was at, what's he called? Oh, oh, Mr. America. Yeah, he's wearing the mask and everything. Yeah, that was really funny, actually. I really liked that gimmick. I can't believe that they uh, got rid yeah, of him so was quick because that was over so much. Yeah, that was such a hilarious gimmick. Remember, it was also because of Hulk Hogan. They brought in, uh, what was his name, uh, Zach Gowan, the guy with one late. Remember when the fans loved that? It was so goofy and fun. Yeah, it, it was Hogan and uh, Zach Gallon versus uh, Vince McMahon and um, Sean O'Hara. And that, that whole thing with Sean O'Hara had pulled the, the kid's fake leg off. And everybody's like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, the, yeah, Zach Gowan, right? Yeah, they called him actually, Tenacious Z on the indie circuit. Yeah, Tenacious Z, that's right. I actually saw him recently on, I think it was uh, Ninja Warrior. And that dude is ripped now. And he did pretty good with one leg. He didn't go all the way, but he did pretty good for you know with one leg. Got a WWF contract with one leg. I know a lot of indie wrestlers who are probably jealous of that. Yep. I don't blame them either. And there was a lot of people that was uh, uh, jealous when James Ellsworth got a contract too, I bet, uh, recently. But then I think they let him go for some reason. And I see that uh, the, the Manny in the chat from Good Dog Press is still... Still talking trash. Says he enjoys making Rick his lady dog. Oh, <laughs> whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Remember that, Rick. You yeah. gotta get on. 
But you know what I noticed? Uh, I noticed Manny uh, still got that yellow streak up his back. He's yeah, still got he's that yellow streak yet. up his back. He's afraid to come in here. He's afraid to put his title on the line. Still not here. Brad Ashworth, and that's the truth. You got a yellow streak running up your back. Let me just do it like Terry Funk would do it. Manny from Good Dog Press. <laughs> you are an egg-sucking dog, Manny. You're scared of Brad <coughs> Ashworth. You oh, always God. have been. You always will be a no good egg sucking dog. Uh, mm -mm. I say he's scared of me. Dog press. I'm the one that he's trash talking the most, right? So well, we got Tito in the chat saying, it. "Arriba, arriba, arriba!" I'm the real champion. You never held the world title, Tito. You know. All we need is Booker T to come in here now. <laughs> Can you dig it, sucker? Hogan, I'm coming for you. Oops. Yep. Gentlemen, you have just over an hour remaining. Oh, okay. Plenty of time. Yeah, Booker T is a man, though. I, I can't wait till y'all draw Booker T. No, That's going to be fun. There's so many versions of Booker T. Harlem Heat. Yep. Uh, when he started to get hot in WCW. King when Booker. He was King Booker teaming with Gold Dust. I would just draw yep. Stone Cold Steve Austin pouring the milk all over him in the supermarket. That was that funny. Was awesome. I would draw. He said, Come on, Booker, let's see how much you call. Harlem Heat, baby. Oh, yeah. Harlem Heat. Good old Harlem Heat. Matter of fact, one of my most favorite Booker T matches was, of course, Booker T versus The Rock. Especially when he hit him with the uh, booking and everybody started calling it a fake rock box. <laughs> I'm no, really debating was, what these guys should draw next week. I was thinking, uh, you know, do we do a tag team like the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, Hawk and uh, Animal, or do we do uh, do we do uh, okay. my boy oh, Roddy Roddy Piper, connection. the Steiner brothers, the Steiner brothers? Steiner brothers. We, uh, what people do we have in the chat? Because we could make up a straw poll, and we could actually, you know, ask them if they want us to do a singles wrestler, a tag team wrestler, and et cetera. And then we can use that, and we'll straw poll next week if they pick tag team and we'll list like some of the best tag teams and Ooh, them oh now, that'd be that interesting sound? to just give each each person a different famous tag team to draw that would be great because you know i mean the the, the the steiners really only have like two looks oh there's yeah. the bushwhackers there are the bushwhackers i prefer the kiwi sheep herders myself we should have. Oh, uh, we need Risey here for to be a bushwhacker. That's correct. That's right. You know what? Like, Risey couldn't be with us today because he uh, had too much fun last night. Oh, is that no, a fact? He was, uh, he was up all day on on Rick's channel. And he was up all night last night too. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say, up, I wouldn't say up all day, seeing as how it was like two to three in the morning for him. <laughs> yeah, but he started streaming at probably like eleven a.m. He goes all day and all night on people's channels. Yeah, I told him this morning on John Diller's thing, hey, dude, you need to chill out of the drinking, bro. <laughs> and go to bed. Yeah. I'll do what I want, man. I'll do what I want. Yeah, that's what he tells me when he's drunk. But when he's sober, he's like, yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's just past noon in, in Perth where, where he's at. So we'll see if he uh, pops on here at some point tonight. He has the invite. He's probably still yeah, you know what's funny? Recovery. We saw about, you know, we saw about Booker T. You know, remember uh, when Rock came out there to face Booker T for the the first time? He said, "I have the the Rock bottle, the people's elbow," and he's like, "You have <laughs> the scissors kick and the spin spinner Rudy." Like, what is the spinner Rudy? Who's that made by Fisher Price? I was <laughs> fucking dying. <laughs> that was a good one. Yes, I agree. Too. I, I was <laughs> freaking dying when he said that. So who makes a spinner Rudy? Fish a price? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh my God. I missed the attitude error. Yeah, what'd you guys tell him? Let me ask what you guys thought about the uh the lady wrestler who decided to uh put a used tampon in the other girl's mouth. Oh god. Is oh, that, that, that? Is that the return that? of the sorry, the say that again, John? Division. I said who did that again? Oh my gosh. I don't I don't know all their names. What what, what what promotion was this? This couldn't have been WWE. No, it wasn't. It, was it a, sounds like some XPW or CZW crap. Yeah, that doesn't like ZZW. 
regardless, disgusting. Uh, that's a different topic for another day. But anyway, that's something. Oh easy my gosh! Yes, it was Priscilla Kelly. Yeah. Ooh. She used to be on WWE. Wait, wait a minute. My my question is: Did she pull it out of a bag, and she pulled out of you know no, what? No, she put out of her you know what on stage. Oh my god, that's disgusting. That has to be ZZW. <laughs> that's always some ZZW stuff. And then she uh, and then she went on Twitter and she said she tweeted, "A penis is funny and awesome. A vagina is disgusting and trashy." Hashtag equality. And I'm just thinking, really? I never saw a wrestler whip his dick out and like strum it along another guy's lips. Oh, uh, there was that one story that Jim Cornette told about that, that guy they read <laughs> when they, they was, uh, you know, that they had that, that homophobic wrestler and they was trying to rib him. And it's supposed to be like, make it seem like, you know what? But then the guy like really did it. He went all the way and really did it and wow. ripped the other guy. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, what about Orlando Jordan? He he was pretty um out there when he was in TNA. Yes, he was. Hey, I think they went a little too far with him. I think he's he actually regrets some of the stuff he d did. Back in the uh, 1950s and 60s, there was a wrestler named Ripper Collins here in the Northwest and up in Western Canada. He's very, very, very famous over in Hawaii, where Manny's at. And uh, Ripper Collins was bisexual. And he would always act like a real dandy whenever like a new young wrestler would come in. Just, how are you, sweetheart? It's good to see you. And it would always freak out the young wrestler. And then they'd get in the ring. <laughs> and the first thing that Ripper would do is he'd tell the guy, give me in a headlock. And the kid would get him in a headlock and Ripper would start licking his nipple. Oh <laughs> that's, a, that's like something I would do. That, that's oh, something geez. I would do. No. That's horrible. No, you know who else I like? Uh, what's your name in uh, NXT right now? Uh, Patrick Clark? The Velveteen Dream? Oh, he, he's phenomenal. I love his gimmick. I don't know. I don't, I don't watch. I don't watch. Believe well, it put it like this. Pat, 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 Patrick Clark is like uh, Orlando yeah. Jordan and Gold to put together. Ooh. Yeah, he's actually, actually yeah. pretty good. Um, he is uh, Velveteen Dream. I'll give him that. He's a bit on the freaky side too. He does like a lot of he told he he acts like of the black version of Prince. Like when he comes down to the ring, he got like the, the stylist clothing on, like the the real, you know, feminine voice and the real feminine clothing. Put it like this, he's like a younger version of Dennis Robin if Dennis Robin was a wrestler. Yeah. He uh his whole match with uh Aleister Black was great because he kept on yelling, Notice me, notice me. It was kind of yep. weird. But he, it he was actually yeah, he got a phone for that because he was wearing some. He was wearing some tights that said "Call me up to the main roster events," and then after the match, <laughs> like they pulled him in the back and yelled at him about that. Yeah, it said "over." Yeah, he wore the headband like Hulk Hogan and said "over." I'm over or something. I was like, "That's yeah, he got real that. That's the problem nowadays. You can't, you know, try to do whatever you can. You can only do so much, and then when you break you know, or you go too far, then they they uh. They, they knock on you. They put you in your place, unfortunately. It's not about getting over. It's about, all right, can't, all right, are people buying enough toys of this wrestler and shirts? They are? Okay, then, yeah, we have to see him more often. That's right. Yeah, sadly, it's not about skill anymore. It's about whether the kids are buying your merchandise or not. That's all that ever used to be matter, about gentlemen. Yeah. I mean, unless you go back to the, the 30s, 20s, 10s. Muir says he is restarting his machine now. So he is uh he has been tagged out of the competition, you know. He's standing there on the apron just waiting to be tagged ropes. back in. Yeah, that's I, mean, I, I, I wish it was still about the skill because you had people like you know Jericho and, and, and Chris Benoit and other guys who got over on their technical skills. They got over real good. And Eddie Guerrero, like, I mean, he got over on his skill. His skill got him over. Oh, like I don't know if that's necessarily true. Eddie Guerrero was a mid carter until you know his character really came out and the Latino Heat came out. That's right. Yeah, he, he brought the. I mean, people still love the skill though. He had those mic skills. Oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, definitely uh, an incredible wrestler. But if you go back to you know the tens, the twenties, and the thirties, when all that mattered was your skill as a wrestler, 
Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think a guy like Vern Gagne would get over today. Yeah. Just like look at Lance Storm. Like a lot of people didn't see the appeal of Lance Storm until they, they, they saw his uh, skills in the ring. Yeah, but I mean, he was, I mean, he was just a mid Carter. No offense to him. What, what killed it was when Stone Cold was went out and did the whole, you're boring and went to sleep with a pillow. That really killed any push he would ever get in the WWE. Well, he was very dry. He was not going to get a push. He was too dry. He was a good wrestler, but you know he didn't have the, the hit factor. Form? Yeah, and there were, there were oh, some yeah. guys that had the hit factor. They just got pigeonholed and pushed down, unfortunately, because of politics and other stuff too. You said grayscale doesn't count as a color, right? That's correct. Grayscale grayscale does not count as a color. Just double checking. That's why Brad is going to win because he's the master of grayscale. That's true. Yeah, just just like how just like how look at uh look at somebody like Braun Strowman. I mean, it took him a minute to get over it, and he finally got over it. When he was with the Wyatt family, everybody thought he was just another big monster until he started talking and you know acting on his own and he started coming up with all those those, those catch these hands and gimmicks and catch crazy. And everybody started loving him, but I just wish they give him the damn title already. I'm excited for Mior to get tagged back in here. Uh, I think he's gonna come back. Uh, have a big comeback, and he's going to win. He's going to get the hot tag. There he is. Boom. Hot tag. Yep. Mior. Robert Garcia. Fans I'm cheer. Ready. God damn it, my machine. No blaspheming on here, Mior. Matter of fact, you know who got over real well, and he spent more time in TNA than WWE, Kurt Angle. When he was in that main event mafia gimmick and everything he did over there, that, that, was, that was brilliant. Yeah, um, he got over in WWE, and that was why, you know, he wasn't over. In, in T Nobody was over in TNA. TNA was never over, no matter how well, many wrestlers about, they had in WWE. I, I got to disagree, because a lot of people say Kurt's best years was in TNA. There were some good, great matches, some good feuds in TNA, but going back to Hulk Hogan and talking about Kurt Angle, let's bring up the uh, the King of the Ring match that they had, where, or where Edge had recently shaved off Kurt's head and he got in a feud with Hogan and and he was wearing you know the fake hair that he had on his little wrestling <laughs> and the um, wrestling yeah, headgear yes yeah. the headgear and they had a great little match and you know Hogan Hogan took the you know the piss out of him he 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 uh took he uh, he did not win the match but you know that was good because he put over angle but at the same time Hogan also um, was able to, you know, take off the wig, wear it at the end, and you know, joke around with it, and that's what really mattered and made the uh, whole match, inter you know, entertaining because that pay per view was an interesting pay per view. It was just coming off the rails um, of WrestleMania. They they had just um, started their what you call it, um, the first ever brand, and it was something different because at that time they had Hogan, they had one champion because that, you know that's how they're doing it now is they have two world champions again I instead of having you. one and uh you know they were they were really trying to bank off of it they were the main the main attraction of that was the champion the undisputed champion undertaker who was heel at the time versus uh triple h and triple h was a champion off of wrestlemania he lost the next month to hogan then the next month hogan lost to taker and Taker was like really one of the only guys to actually hold that belt the longest when they still called it the undisputed belt. Because as soon as Brock won it, uh, and he said he was going to stay on SmackDown, they had to come up with a new belt for Raw, and they, they brought in the old WCW belt. But then they would refer to the undisputed title just as the WWE belt. Yep. So, and, uh, and the WCW belt was called the World Heavyweight Championship that Eric Bischoff brought out and handed it to Triple H. Yeah. Well, Triple H had just become heel again. Um, brought Shawn Michaels back, and they needed a heel champion, and they got it. Well, see, that, that's the one thing I like about Triple H, because he made that speech a long time ago how, like, you know, his thing is he's not a heel or he's not really a face. He just like if he just beats up the people, and when he beats up the people, everybody likes. They call him a hill. somebody that everybody hates. They call him a face. And he said, you know, I, I've never had a side. I just come here. I just wrestle. 
It's something he said along those lines that you heal that you face. It depends on who you're fighting against. Because there were some times where, like, you know, people cheered for Triple H, even though, you know, they regard him as a, a major hill, but there was times he went against other hills and everybody cheered him. So what do you guys think about the new promotion, AEW? Do you guys know about this? Nope. nope. No. Have, I, I, I had a few comments. You saw the one with Jericho? No. Nope. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Melter. Yeah, I had a few conversations with uh, Macho Mang on Twitter. And the thing is, the problem with it is, is one thing they said that really is going to hurt them, or two things. One is they promised to pay for all the wrestlers' in injuries. So that's good in a way, but at, at the same time, that could hurt them as a new company even though they have a big backer. And two, they promised that all wrestlers, men and women, will be paid the same rate, which kind of sounds stupid in my book because when you're going to have a main eventer, you paid the same amount of money as someone that's just starting there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I hope that's not what they mean. I hope they mean you, you're still going to main event spot, but I guess you know, new people coming in, men and women are going to get the same money. If that's what they mean, that makes more sense. But that, that could be some issues there. Yeah, but, I don't know uh, how they're going to do anything. I just I don't see it. You know, Vince has a monopoly, and I don't think anybody can, can defeat him. Young Bucks are good, though. I do like the Young Bucks. Yeah, well, I can hope the best. They got Jericho. Jericho says he's taking pay cuts, and he doesn't care about the money, but we'll see. Um, who knows who else they're going to get in there. They, they need as many big names as they can get. They need a TV deal. And they need to, uh, well, first off, they should not go head-to-head -head with WWE. That would be the dumbest move ever. Because that's what happened with TNA. They came back with Hulk Hogan and, and, the, and the click. What did uh, WWE do to combat that? Oh, they brought Bret Hart back. So, that yeah, if Bret they do that, you yeah, that's actually a smart move by WWE, and if they do it, WWE is going to do something similar to that too. They'll bring some old person back, or someone that you know that they want, Ooh. and they'll do that just to compete. You because you got to be smart. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I mean, he's old, but yeah. Woo! How many wrestlers Woo! are there actually? I mean, I, I only know WWE and uh, that one NCW, I think. How many out there actually? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, TV deal wise, and then there's in indies. TV deals, depending on how big they are, there's there's quite a handful. Uh, in Japan, there's New Japan. And at one time, All Japan was the number two. Now I think it's dropped back. And the number two in Japan is what? Dragon's Gate? Yeah, I heard of that one. I'm I may be wrong, but it could be them. But other than that, DDT is another one because they're much of a more of a parody, and they're from Japan. Um, you have WWE you got, you got Lucha America, Underground. Lucha what? Underground. Yeah, you have Lucha Underground. You have CMLL. You have um, AAA. You have. Oof. You got the one with Wade Barrett. You got Devo Defiance. And you can almost see that three all the time on the, uh, was it, uh, Russell Talk channel. That's good going, British wrestling. Going back to the Brett, when they brought Brett Hart back, remember initially when they had the Raw had the different hosts every Monday, they had Dennis Miller on there, and they asked Dennis Miller, who would you like to see come back as a guest host? And he's like, oh, I want to see Brett Hart. <laughs> and then all like what like a couple weeks later Bret Hart came back. So I'd love to ask everybody watching right now just to very quickly to skirt your mouse over there and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps. It truly does. It encourages all these artists to come back again next week if we get a lot of views. And I'm speaking of me. speaking of all these amazing artists, I'm just going to go through the list and ask everybody what they're working on. Starting with Big Brad Ashworth from Pencil for Life. Yeah. Other than making totally awesome original content for your YouTube channel, Pencil for Life. Sure. 
What uh, what else are you working on, Bradley? Uh, my book, Handyman, coming out pretty soon. Handyman? What's that about? Uh, it is about a uh, hitman who uh, retired for the from the drug cartels to raise a family. Uh, he gets sucked back into the life for selfish reasons to begin with, but then he stays to right some serious wrongs. Fascinating. Yeah. Cross Comics, do you got anything going on? What do you do? Uh, I well, I got my channel and work do a whole bunch of art over there, live draws at noon and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I'm working on Tales Beyond the Gate with a whole bunch of uh, other guys. It's an anthology, it's horror. And then probably in May or June I have my own book that I'm probably gonna be bringing out called The Canadian Shield. Okay. General John Wallace, I know you're working on a novel. Oh, yeah. You want to tell us about it? Nope. Well, mine's is called The Grand Crusade. It's about a bunch of supernatural beasts, if you uh, want to put it like that. And they're basically trying to save the last of the human race from rogue angels and demons and monsters from another universe. It's basically a story about a dystopian Earth and, you know, God has, like, disappeared, quote-unquote. And uh, all these different forces decide to do what they want. So I have a group of like supernatural beings. It's like going to protect the last of the human race and uh, fight all these uh, mythical monsters, creatures, angels, and demons. And I'm having fun with it. Okay. My man in Malaysia, the mighty, mighty Mior. Yes, I am. What are you working on lately? Oh, well, uh, I have uh, my own webcomic. Uh, titled to the broken and the damned which you can read on tapas uh, I, I actually have it linked uh, i think on my uh, on my uh, twitter page uh, the story is basically about an eldritch abomination you know uh, basically a tentacle monster and Ooh. he's the hero Ooh. and yeah he's the hero of the story Basically, it's a uh, left. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, left craft light. It's, uh, okay. uh, it's simply yet. Okay. Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics. Other than Hello. an amazing piece by Hulk, uh, an amazing uh, image of Hulk Hogan. <clears throat> what are you working on when you're not drawing professional wrestlers every Friday night? Um, I have an original kid-friendly action adventure graphic novel series that I work on. Uh, my son helped me write it. And I drew it, and right now I have a good friend of mine by the name of Avery Butterworth, who's actually coloring. He's uh, working on coloring the second book right now, while I'm in the process of drawing the third book. And uh, anybody that goes over to Misfit Corner Comics, the YouTube channel, can follow along. Uh, we pretty much document every step of the process, from character designs, to layouts, to pencils, to inks. And Avery on his channel, Comics and Illustration Studio 7.62, uh, does live streams uh, showing him coloring the book. So that's it. That's what I'm working on. That's, what does the 7.62 stand for? Uh, it's something with guns. I don't oh. know for sure. Okay, fair enough. Something about cool. ammunition. If, uh -huh. if you're familiar with guns, you'll know what it means. But yeah, I am. That's where it comes from. So, okay. Mm. P.S. Melter, other than producing and co-hosting this incredible drawing, blood each and every Friday night at 7:30 p.m. Pacific time on Testosterone Overload. What do you do? Uh, I draw. I'm working on a comic right now. I, ha I don't have it ready, but yeah, I mean, I do a little bit with my channel when I have time, so I can do like just some drawings, sometimes some building Legos or whatever. But tomorrow is going to be really fun because a friend of ours, Nasser, uh, Rabati, is going to be doing a uh, Rubik's Cube challenge against me, but it'll be on his channel. So uh, you guys need to look up Nasser Robotti, and at some point tomorrow, or I think it may be Sunday, we'll be having a Rubik's Cube battle. And he is uh, a great writer. He's got a bunch of different books out, like Stardust, as well as a com another comic book called Brutus the Badass, done by former Image uh, artist Donald T. DeLay. I love Nasser. 
Yes. I'm going to actually It'll watch happen. that. It sounds boring as hell, but it also sounds absolutely fascinating to see how long you guys can sit there before you both give up on the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> well, Nas is a real funny guy, though. Nas is a real funny guy. He can complete it. It takes him a while sometimes. I'd rather see you guys do a Qbert challenge. You remember no, that old video to... game? Oh, uh, God, I hate <laughs> that one. No, I got something better. Connect Four challenge. Let me ask this of your friendly neighborhood ninja who is drawing a stunning Hulk Hogan in Suburban Commando. Ninja, what else are you working on when you're not drawing images of Hulk Hogan? Um, well, I am currently the colorist for Sporkman Goes to Japan. And uh, also, I'm working on a little something with Doug Garrett called Psychotron, about a uh, decommissioned military cyborg from World War III in a dystopian future. Uh, working with uh, Josh the Amazing Animator on a little comics property called Science Wizard Comics, which will be uh, debuting soon enough here. You can go check out their uh, stuff on their website there getting their stuff together you can check out their twitter link got a, a train coming because i'm talking usually happens when i need to say something so uh yeah also, is that the a train is that albert yeah, yeah. is that albert I was thinking about train? That. yep a train i was thinking about is that. Your stratus on there <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, he is. god bless this or is that uh is that ice train from wcw you remember him yeah Oh, no, pop, no pop for ice train, huh? Okay, what about no, when I, was with I'm, I'm Scott Norton and they were fire and ice? Mm. No, still no pop. Okay. I think I think you have to pop out a more obscure one like uh, uh, what was his name? Sergeant Craig Pittman. Uh, the uh, the misfits or 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 was the misfits in action? Was that Crowbar and uh, David Flair? Uh, that, that had Booker T. That had what was Major Guns? What's oh, yeah. his name? Oh yeah, Bill Demott, uh, Hugh Morris, General yep. Rection. Mm -hmm. And then they had what's whatever his name was the Dan guy Hammer. who used to be. Ben. Yeah, they also had what's his name? Also the one that had the mask and everything. Uh, Chavo. Uh, you no, know, it's the. the uh, no, no, he was the one that that, that uh, what was his what was his name? He the one. He was the one that. Had no, the one that had the Who's Mortal Kombat gimmick. Mortal Kombat Glacier. gimmick guy. Glacier. Glacier. Yeah, he, he, was, yeah, he was Sarge. Oh, I wanted to say Glacier so bad. <laughs> I loved he that was, guy. <laughs> he was I so thought funny. Glacier was awesome, but yeah, he just didn't. It just didn't work out. Remember, he well, was a former was like police officer. Bring back that like 80s style of characters. Yeah, he like, was just Mortal Kombat, dude. Or, yeah. He was totally a, a sub zero ripoff. Yeah, I do like more. He had Mortis. Yeah, Chris Canyon was oh, Mortis. Yeah. yeah. Good old Chris and, Canyon. Uh, and Better Brian Clark Canyon. was was uh, Wraith. Or Wrath. Yeah, I, I, talk, I, I talked about Crying the Girl. Did Brian Adams and Brian Clark? I do like that tag team. Yeah, Brian Adams started here. He was the American Ninja out here in Portland for, yep, for years. Yep. Brian Adams. Brian Clark, chronic, 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 chronic. What about, what about Horace? What about Horace Hogan? Hulk Hogan's um. Apparently. Oh yeah, Horace Boulder. Yeah, he was uh, big in Japan, kinda. He was a mid Carter. Yeah. Made a living just you know being related to Hogan. Not too shabby. Cool. I'm gonna say this: my all-time favorite wrestler of all time, Masahiro Chono. Oh, Masa my hero Chono. Yeah, Team Two Thousand, baby. Interesting. Team all the way. If we're going to name favorite wrestlers, I think I have a shit ton of respect for Mick Foley. Oh, yeah, of course. Hmm. You know, I, I actually thought his gimmick as Mankind was, was probably one of the funnier ones. Dude, love it. Was. It's what got him over, really. And, oh. you know, kept his jacket, man. Actually got him over. Really all of them. What about George the Animal Steel? What? No, what about him? Oh, my him? God. He was pretty funny. George Daniels reminded me of, uh, of my next door neighbor's dirty uncle. Okay. <laughs> George should have had 
gone heel at one point and gone against Hogan. That would have been a great, great feud. No, he Indeed. was heel for a while there. And he never uh, fought Hogan, though, unfortunately. He would have been a great monster. I was really amazed at how good he did playing Tor Johnson in uh, the Ed Wood movie by Tim Burton. And, you know, I missed that one. Oh, yeah, they have, they have some, some wrestling. They have a wrestling scene in there, and it's actually really well shot, too. Tim Burton did really good on that movie. Mm. Interesting. Well, it's it not up. as good as Deathstalker 2, which also has wrestling in it. That's Queen Kong from Glow. You know you know who I'm so upset never really got over, and he had the, the height and the skill? Nathan Jones. Ah, oh, yeah, Nathan Jones, yeah, but his, that wasn't his fate, you know? His destiny was to be in movies. Yeah, but he had the height and the skill. Like he was like one of the only dudes, like seven foot, that could do a, a freak, a freaking spin kick like the Green Ranger. Yeah, he really looked the part. Another guy that I thought really looked the part was old Bull Buchanan. Oh yeah, him too. And uh, don't, don't, don't don't forget uh, what, what's his name? The the guy. It's not my fault. Um, Snitsky. Gene Snitsky had the look too. Yeah, Snitsky had the look, but I think that was about all he had. Snitsky had the look of a psychopath. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Could have got over. He could have got over. They did him right. You know who was a good psycho? Psycho Sid. Oh, Sid uh, Vicious, uh, Justice or Sid yeah. Vicious or whatever. He was never committed to the business he was though. You know, by at the time. what kind of an asshole like takes six months off to play freaking amateur softball? What kind like, of asshole puts a squirrel really? in his uh, underwear because someone bet him a hundred bucks? Uh, I would and say that Manny likes- from Good Dog Press maybe would be the type of person to do that. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but M- Manny would put a frog down there. He would. Ooh. Oh, is it a cyber frog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be a cyber frog if he pulled out his underwear. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. so, so does Living anybody play freaking frat house? What cross comics? What were you saying there, Rowdy Rick Piper? Does anybody play the games, the WWE oh, of games? Of course. No, no. I'm, not since I turned in my 16. Opinion, in my opinion, the best ones were the SmackDown versus Raw ones. After SmackDown, after THQ stopped making the games, they got kind of boring. Yeah, SmackDown 2 was the pinnacle. It was. PlayStation. Maybe it was a PlayStation 2. I can't remember. The, Nintendo 64 SmackDown. version of PS2, I think. Actually, the best one they he made was on the Xbox. That was a uh, Raw Two, Monday Night Raw Two, WCW versus the World. That was the best. Yeah, that was Nintendo a Sixty Four. That was a good one. Yep. Like that. Yeah, was that the one, the Revenge one? That's when they had like you know more like oh yeah, more WCW yeah. versus NWO Revenge. Yeah, bro. Dude, you had everybody. You had so many different uh, rosters. You had you had the flock. You had NWO white, red, WCW. You had like these these um they were actually J- Japanese wrestlers, but they uh, couldn't use them. So you know they they changed them up. Like Ninja was actually I believe Hayabusa and stuff. So <laughs> they had the generic look for them. That was so fun though. And it was just free for all. Mm mm mm. Good old days. Now they got 2K making the WWE games. They're not as fun as the SmackDown vs. Raw game. Yeah, it's it's hard to do a lot of the moves with those ones, I find. Yeah. SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 was the last game that had Chris Wall in there. That's a real good one. Well, look at this. Now Manny is... Excuse me. Now uh, Andrew has changed to drawing a bear. He's completed his picture. With with thirty five minutes still to go, he's completed his picture. What a very confident artist he is. Well, technically, oh, yeah. we're almost into the next day, and I have a New Year's resolution to do a sketch a day in my sketchbook. So technically, I'm completing Saturday's sketch now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what is it about bears? It's the whole Kogan thing that it's, that kind of inspired it this time. Like uh, the guys that uh, that did the. The fan speak, um, the uh, the the, the um, drawn and quartered fan edition last night did uh, Zorro. So tonight in my my sketchbook, I did my version of Zorro. Oh, that's so Ooh, awesome! But I did it as I did it as I did him as an actual fox. So I love it. But 
yeah. So these guys are these guys doing these drawn and quartered, and these these uh, competitions like this are inspiring me, and uh, this this that's why I love it. This is great. So yes, indeed. And actually, quick fact: a uh, 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 humanoid grizzly bear is uh, my uh, ex boyfriend of my novel. You always have something weird, John. Always. Hey, man, look. I'm Jesus. sorry, dude, but it's always. I know. There's never something normal in your book. It's always. Something of weird. course, because I'm not. I'm not a normal person. I mean, <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> it's like I, I always got this vampire lady killer chick. You know. You know. It's just. I, just, I think it's funny. I gotta go. I, I gotta go with what I know. You know, minotaurs, <laughs> centaurs, manicores, You know, vampires, werewolves. That's all I know. Angels, <laughs> demons. Minot minotaurs are awesome. Yes, they are. I got a minotaur that's a boxer, and he's based after the his Irish boxer friend of mine on Twitter named Jay Fairclough. Chronos Chiron in the chat says, uh, "Asks, did you hear about Canada's new drinking law?" They nope. can test you at the bar and even at your home. If you do what? not comply, you get busted. What? Yeah. Okay. I think, I, think, this. I think he's joking because he put a laugh out loud at the end of it. I think he's laughing at Canada and how stupid they are. That's my opinion. Well, he's, can he's Canadian, so if it wasn't if it wasn't for the Hart family. Like and we went around Canada squeezing every testicle. I bet we couldn't fill a shot glass up with testosterone. <laughs> hey, Kevin! No, Kevin! No one comes from Canada. Be nice. Uh -huh. No, no. Hey, I'm it's from Canada. Canada too. I know you yeah, are. That's what. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at, bud. Come Ooh, on now. Yeah, I got Kevin, Kevin, no one says more testosterone in his left pinky than you do in your whole entire career, buddy. I don't think that's actually true. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I've, I've never heard the Hearts talk about Kevin Owens. Because he didn't get traded by the Hearts. That's right. He sure didn't. Why not? He's from Canada. Maybe he didn't. He, he didn't need the Hearts uh, dungeon to get over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. No, he needed it to be a better wrestler so that he could draw better. Well, Kevin Owens does not draw. What's wrong with you, son? Kevin Owens draws a lot. Oh yeah. Is that why? Is that why they still only have like twos and threes in the ratings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dude, that, that, that's the whole company. That, that that's the whole company, okay, man. You can't cool. just blame that on him. That's yeah, I the can. Whole I'm blaming it on him right now. When you put Roman Reigns as the face of the company, that's why. You know, I told you the last time we had to talk about this. They Roman's wanted to not draw the face of the company. Yeah, they were they weren't drawn good before Roman. They aren't drawn good after Roman. They aren't drawn good. Well, just you know, I'm just they, calling, they, were, I'm just they were kind of doing a little bit better. They were doing a little bit better before they tried to make Roman the face of the company. They were doing a little bit better. I guarantee you, they put somebody like Finn Balor as the face of the company, or Roderick Strong, or you know, like Alistair Black. They be doing phenomenal. So, back to Canada. Kronos Chiron also says, uh, if you were in your car and you got home, and then you took a cab back to the bar and then back home, they could still arrest you. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I don't think so. I don't even drink. Don't, don't, what's wrong? I don't go out and drink. I don't drink at all. But uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Well, Brad, I'm going to come to Utah, and you and me, and it's like Jimmy are going out and getting shit house drunk tomorrow. You can get shit house Jimmy drunk all you want. More. No, I can't do that. No I need other people who don't drink to do it with me now. I don't drink with people well, who drink. Well, well, well Jimmy yeah, doesn't drink. Bro. I don't drink. The hardest thing I drink is energy drink. Oh, God. I think I'd rather yeah. drink alcohol. No, I'm good. I stopped drinking alcohol. There's no point, you know? I agree. I don't see the point. I don't either. Actually, I had some wine on my birthday. I got pretty schnockered off a bottle of wine on my birthday, and uh, that was it. That was it for me. You know, once once a year is good enough for me. It sounds good. Yeah, dude, it should have been good. It was a fifty dollar bottle of wine. It better be good. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. That sounds worth bang for your buck. You know how much that is in my country? Me, I could feed a family of four for six months off that bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's ass white money around here, Muir. Yep. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the exchange rate in these countries is phenomenal. Like you, you could take 
you could take like a hundred thousand dollars from America, go over to India, be a freaking billionaire in their money. No, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yes, dude. No, dude. All right, have, haven't you not seen Euro Trip? Have you never seen Euro Trip? <laughs> <laughs> All right, explain. Oh, they went what? there and they, they had no money and they had like uh, maybe like two dollars. And they were able to get like a hotel and stuff. So they uh, they tip the uh, waiter uh, with a nickel and he has, oh, a nickel. And he looks at his boss, he slaps his boss. I build my own hotel with this nickel. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I work, I, I, work, I work with Indian people all the time. They said if you take a lot of American money, you know, go over to India, you could be filthy freaking rich over there and their, their money, the exchange rate. Gentlemen, I have to inform you, you have 30 minutes remaining. 30 oh, no. minutes. Yes. I don't think Not I can do anything minutes. else. Well, I'm well, starting to good. feel like maybe you guys get too much time, so I think maybe, you know, maybe we're going to start cutting it back then, Brad, since you're so arrogant about it. Hey, I'm not the one who's drawing a sketchbook. That's true. You're not. You're not. That's why I'm surprised that you would it would heal out like that so quickly. Well, well P.S. Meltzer's version of Hulk Hogan looks like a uh, Homer Simpson turned to a Incredible Hulk. It looks like uh, actually, you know, it, it looks like Horace Boulder with blonde hair. Hmm. <laughs> actually, it looks like uh, that guy from uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, the next door neighbor. Oh yeah, oh. No, actually, I can't believe I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Actually, it does. Well, damn. <laughs> no, I was trying to. I was trying to get the image from like what I could find from the nanny, and, and it's one. It's very small, but let me let me share real quick. Since let me just go ahead and share it. Okay, go ahead Screen and share sh it. Screen share it. Yeah, this is the one I'm trying to work on right here. And let me ask something real quick here. Oh, yeah. You said no, that uh, grayscale doesn't count as. Uh, Color. color, right? Correct. That's correct. So I still have two colors, technically. You have two colors to use. Sometimes nice. I even up it to three just for fun. Ooh. Ooh. Just double checking because I uh, just wanted to double check here because I'm adding all the other colors that I need to add. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to up it, up it to three, but only if Manny is going to use like a bluish color as his third color to color in the lightning behind his Hulk Hogan. Then I would be interested in upping it to is three. Manny even drawing anything? Manny is drawing an awesome bear. He loves bears. So do I. Manny. That's a man. That's Andrew. Or I don't know why I keep calling him Manny. Because Manny's on your mind. Because Manny is on my mind. Because Manny is a bear. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> That's true. It is. It's Andrew Charper from Misfit corner comics yeah, i don't yeah. know i don't know why wrestling is bringing out bears in me but it just is uh-huh yeah. right. he's a big fan of the police academy movies when they stumble into the blue oyster bar that's why he's thinking about <laughs> bears all the time mm. Ooh. Cool. look man we had a blue we had the blue oyster club up here at one point the time to close down uh-huh a lot of beautiful lady boys yeah. we also had a place called breakfast with tiffany's you know that's yeah. all the lesbians yeah. and uh, the gay guy thing out of it oh okay we, we had one called the city nightclub here in portland Ooh. uh back in the 90s Ooh. that was actually like the best club in portland too strangely enough well man gay people know how to party huh? yeah yeah gay men do know how to party are you kidding exactly that's why i love them i can, I can testify to that actually is that you love them I do love him. I do love him. <laughs> I love a heterosexual too. man. I still love I, him. I love you too. This whole Kogan is looking really good, you friendly neighborhood ninja. Yeah. Ninja one already. Risey Lee slept in till about one o'clock this afternoon. Perth time. I don't know what they actually call that time zone. I want to find out what they call that time zone. Oh, sure. No, they his own time zone. they've got like three time zones over there at least. Mm. Australia, the place where everything over here is small and tiny, is giant and nasty looking over there. Yeah, that's true. They got those mm. big yeah. Goliath birding fighters in Australia. Those things like as big as a puppy. Okay, so there's uh there's Norfolk Island time. 
There's Australian Central Daylight Time, Australian Western Standard Time, and Christmas Island Time. He's probably Western Oz, Western Australian Time. Uh, he is, no, yes, he's, he's Western Australian Time. The Rise is my favorite bushwhacker. Bushwhackers <laughs> are uh, Kiwis. Well, you know, uh, uh, P.S. Meltz is a version of Hulk Hogan. He can have it as Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger for his cosplay in his Hulk Hogan. Oh, Lord. Christmas Island is known for its red, red crabs. Ooh. Gross. I already they get real big over there. Sounds like that island's a bit crabby. Yeah. Crabby yeah. Patty Island. Crabby Patties. <laughs> Well, Rizy Lee does remind me of like uh, Squidward on acid. <laughs> Remember, Rizy, you're voting for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. right. No, he had to be drawing Cyclops for right to the point for you. If you was drawing Cyclops as Hulk Hogan, he vote for you definitely. No, well, no, no. I, I, I have sent him a Cyclops, so. <laughs> He's got a Cyclops done by John Dillard as well. But no, no, everyone should vote for me or else you're racist. It's that simple. <laughs> we got Cyclops' as yellow in here. <laughs> did it yellow did belly. Did it did yellow did belly. It. Right. I stopped respecting Cyclops after he killed Professor X. I'm sorry. He pissed Rice me off. He's apparently still drunk despite having slept 10 hours. Dude, stop drinking, Risey. Yeah, it's man. Gonna ruin your cookies. It's called yeah. a hangover, Risey. <laughs> like, you need to like, seriously take a break for several days. If you happen to be yeah. watching the stream right now, please uh, just uh, flip your mouse over there and click that thumbs up. It, it truly helps to inspire these uh, artists to come back next week. And, uh, the last True, thing you want is to get out of this one guy drawn against himself. You know, I was thinking about a really cool name for this, like like Friday Night Drawdown, like Friday Night Smackdown. Oh, there it is, and there's another one. We're going to switch it to Monday nights, and we're just going to do the Monday Night Draw. Yeah. We are, brother. We are. See, see, Ninja's already won. That's why he's so confident. Look at that. Look at I that, that beautiful chain walk over. Drawing Raw. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, our, our friend Mior has uh, disappeared yet again. Oh, he did? Up. I didn't notice. Oh, no, there he is. There he is. Sorry. Oh, wait. <laughs> Even I thought I disappeared. <laughs> oh, look at me. Yours. Me yours got that. Uh, he got the MTV looking Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He wants his MTV, MTV brother. Um, oh, yeah. MTV. I'm just trying to imagine something that you could put. But you know what? You know why I'm I'm able to win this competition? I'm drawing wow. Hulk Hogan, and I'm a real American, unlike some of these other guys. I think the choice of Hulk Hogan and Suburban Commando is an excellent choice. It was, it was. You know, so like, you know we're gonna do right? You know, we're gonna do these. You're gonna power my face in. No, it's the '90s. We're gonna sue you. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> yep. I that, scene. that movie was funny. If you I haven't seen that, today. if you haven't seen Suburban Commando, you need to go figure out how you can get that movie. They, they had Doc Brown in there. He's always might be able to find it today. on VHS over there. Gentlemen, you have 20 minutes remaining. 20 minutes. And we're going to talk Chester and Booster and, and do Bunny Vision with that on Rabbit TV. Also, I need to inform Brad that Risey has said that he is going to have today off from drinking, Good. but only because he can't be bothered to go into the shop to buy more beer. Good. <laughs> oh, come on, Risey. You got to let it go for like at least a week. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Seriously, we're concerned At least a couple house, of days. Dude. Let's, not, let's yeah. not stream into an intervention for our, our Australian. No, we're streaming into an intervention right now. He's our friend. Okay, Risey, right? we need you to come in here right now. We need to, we need to have a serious talk. We need to, you know, make this a downer. See for everybody else watching. We love you, right? right? We have, we we have our right? after school special, man. He said after school yeah. special. The more, the more you know. 
Mooi genoeg. I'm curious uh, to see how far Muir gets. You know, he's technical difficulties with his computer. <laughs> I'm very curious to see how far he's going to get here. He's desperately coloring, ladies and gentlemen. Desperately uh, I'm coloring. I'm looking at that Hollywood Hogan one that Brad's doing, man. I'm always excited to see Brad draw. Yeah, I'm always excited to see Brad draw, too. He's very talented. Yeah, that's a pinup picture right there. It is. You can frame that picture on your wall. I think Manny's left us to go do his. I think Manny's left us to go do his own show. No, he's here. Manny's here. Oh, not Manny. I mean, Muir. Let's just. Yeah, Manny doesn't care about us. Man, yeah. Manny actually was like when I told him. I told him it's gonna be Hogan. He was like, "Oh no, I guess he's not a big Hogan fan." We are the why. only people in Comicsgate that are streaming right now that I know of. Uh, Mike was earlier. Should we bring Slick Jimmy in here? Slick Jimmy Love from Little Girl Lethal? I do believe well, he's not. a wrestling fan. He's, <laughs> he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a passing wrestling fan. He's a wrestling fan in passing. But you know, you know what, though? The one thing that uh, I wish we could change, if you could change the hands of time, the Crispin Wild never disgraced itself like that because, you know, he would have been phenomenal today. Oh, man. Depressing. He would have been retired today, dude. He, he would. He, he would have been training people. He would be training people right now. He would have been dead, actually. I heard something about that, the way they said about how bad his brain was messed up, that he actually didn't have much time to live. And that was coming from, I think, Nancy's sister or something. But I don't know how, how, you know, I guess, I don't know. It was, if, if we could have stopped him from getting all them head injuries, yeah, he would have been living a better life. If I had a chance, I would have saved Owen. I would have just saved Owen Hart. Oh, yeah, definitely. Owen probably would have been still alive training today, too. Oh, yeah, he'd be over there in the dungeon teaching these young kids. The British yeah. Bulldog, I miss him. Why are so many of the hearts dead right now? What do you mean? So many of the hearts aren't dead. Mike passed away uh, when he was younger. Uh, Smith just passed away uh, from cancer this last year. And, uh, I mean, Owen had the tragic accident, but there's nine, nine other heart children who are still alive. But but, but you you know what happened, though, in a, in a, in a crazy twist of fate? Remember when uh, Sting had injured Ravishing Rick Rubin in Japan? And then oh, yeah. all these years later, stuff, stuff, uh, what, Rollins injured, uh, he ended up injuring, um, Sting the same way Sting injured, uh, Rick, Rick Root. No, that I was, I, I kind of remember that, but it's kind of a vague memory. Was that when, uh, like, that, Rick Root was the international champion? It was like, he was, uh, moment. yeah, he was like an international champion. He was, there was a match in Japan in Tokyo, though. And, uh, Sting was still, it was before Sting was the, uh, to the crow makeup and stuff. And uh, they had, he had a match with Rick Rude. Rick Rude's back got injured, and he couldn't wrestle no more. And then, you know, you fast forward to, like, what, a couple years ago with Seth Rollins that put uh, Sting out with the same injury, the same back injury? It was an accident. Things happen like that sometimes. They said it was an accident with Rick Rude, too, but a lot of people had blamed Sting for it because Sting, like, never really uh, apologized for it or something. And people said, Sting, oh, Sting did it on purpose. Or some crap like that. It was some crazy rumor that Sting did it on purpose. Then years later, Seth Rollins did it. And Sting's back. I injured the same way. And everybody said, oh, well, you know, that's just a turn of fate. Because I like Rick Rude. Rick Rude is a phenomenal wrestler. Yeah, he was. Rick Rude was actually going to come back somehow. And that, then, you know, he had that heart attack and died. I don't know how he was going to yeah. come back. I guess he maybe had a different kind of surgery to fix it, but. I miss uh, the British Bulldog too, man. That was my boy. Yeah, they were a good tag team, the British Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. Yes, they were. Remember that one segment where the rock hit the rock bottom on British Bulldog on top of the dog crap, and then he went to go deliver the people's elbow, and then British Bulldog turned over with the dog crap on his back, and rock stopped it and just went to the ropes and cheered? Um, yes, I do remember that. Yeah, man, a, Kyle, wow. 
Yeah, the mankind brought the dog crap to the ring, and Rock was going against the British Bulldog, and he hit the rock bottom on top of the dog crap. Then he's going to do the people's elbow, then he stopped and just went to the ring and, and started uh, waving to the the crowd, and they stopped the match. Like, oh, it's basically over. Because he wasn't going to drop the people's elbow on top of, you know, all that dog crap when British Bulldog's back. That was funny. Actual dog crap? Yeah, it was, it was, they said it was actual dog crap, but you never know. <laughs> that's that's what I remember. Like when someone asked Vampiro, "What? Uh, why didn't you ever go to the WWF?" And he says, "Because I didn't want to be po body slammed on dog shit." <laughs> well, the, the fact that British Bulldog did that just shows his character. You know, he was willing to take that a rock bottom on top of the stinky dog crap. <laughs> mm, stinky dog crap. My no, you know, you know, you know what I love. I love when uh the Rock tried to hit the rock bottom on Eddie Guerrero, and he he uh reversed it to um a, it was like like a snapmare. He reversed it to a snapmare right in the middle of it. That was funny. You have a lot of great wrestling memories, John. I'm actually really. Does, I, I love wrestling, man. I love wrestling. I do. What about, I really do. What about Big Boss Man, um, and Al Snow and Pepper? Oh yeah, that was great when he fed. The dog to Al Snow, yeah. Little dog. No, remember my greatest uh, boss man memory was when Big Show's uh, father died and Boss Man had a he uh -huh, stole the yeah. hearse. Right. <laughs> and oh, Big yeah. Show, Big Show was crying. He had the snot bubbles and everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> <He just tasted. laughs> bastard! <laughs> oh no. When the big show was chasing uh um Shane McMahon and Shane McMahon making fun of him, like, oh he was all backstage or like which way did he go? Oh no, which way did he go? God, I missed the nineties. Best wrestling years. The nineties were fun. Yes, they were. Yeah, it was it was wacky, it was it was just fun, man. Yes, it was. Uh, since we're talking about Hogan and nineties wrestling and stuff. One thing, one thing I would like to talk about is um, the whole thing with um, Vince Russo and Jeff Jarrett and Hogan. I think oh, everybody remembers this. I think everybody remembers this whole thing, and it uh, it was insane. The whole he went up uh, uh, to lay down, and Jarrett just laid down to get pinned, and Hogan went on his rant, and and then he left, and then after that, Vince Russo went on his rant. And and then uh, Hogan quit. But uh, apparently half of that was planned, but Russo going out afterwards was apparently not planned. And that's what upset Hogan. And Hogan was like, all right, I quit. I quit. You know, he, he felt disrespected now. Someone can tell me that it was all a plan from the get-go. That's a whole different story. But that's how I remember uh, the whole thing. And... Uh, that was a very interesting uh, moment in WCW history towards the end. Oh, yeah. I think that was remember the last time we saw him, too. Remember when uh, Jeff Jarrett and China had to share the belt? Was it like the, the Intercontinental belt? Or was it the European title? Uh, it, was, it was her and Jericho, yeah. No, no. It was, uh, I think it was Jeff Jarrett and China. I swore it was Jeff Jarrett and China. They had to share that belt for a little while. Well, they was, they was facing Jeff Jarrett or something. Yeah. I swear it was Jeff Jarrett. In China. It was Jeff Jarrett in China. Yeah, held the yep. dual intercontinental champions. Yeah, I remember that. And then Jeff Jarrett dropped it in the, the good housekeeping match. He uh, his contract yep. expired the uh that Saturday night, and Sunday was the pay per view, and he was supposed to drop the China, China the title to China, and he walked in and he basically told Vince, uh, "I'm not dropping that belt. I'm leaving. I'm not under contract. I don't have to do shit. You got to pay me three hundred fifty thousand dollars if you want me to drop the belt to her." So Vince cut him the check, and that's why you never saw Jeff Jarrett in the WWE ever again. Except nope. when he got into the Hall of Fame recently. Yeah, which yeah, I don't know way, why he know, was in the Hall of Fame. He doesn't deserve you it. You know you have it centered on me, right? Well, why wouldn't I, Brad? I was just wondering. Because I was playing videos from uh, uh, my favorite site. Well, here's I, I you know, I, I saw the video <laughs> that you were watching there on the World Star Hip Hop, and I actually want to share... Uh, Something Brad's trying to get your show copy struck. I'm not. No, he's he is. He's evil. I want to talk about where uh, my main man Mior from Malaysia is chilling at right now. Because if you didn't know it, Malaysia is actually like two 
entirely yeah. separate different islands. Uh, it's uh, next to is, uh, Brunei yeah, well, and Indonesia, and it's next to Thailand also. So where are you at, Muir? I, I'm on the uh, peninsula, on the uh, left. Do on the left there. Okay, here's Kuala Lumpur. Where are you in relation to Kuala Lumpur? I am roughly two and a half hours north from Kuala Lumpur. I'm from a state called Perak, which literally translates as silver. Is that by Teluk Anson? Let me see. Um, you got a map on the screen. Yes, sir. No, I, I did, uh, a little bit north. Do you see Ipoh there? Uh -huh. Yeah, Ipoh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my city. That's why I'm from. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, great. Cool. Now, for those of you who are wondering, you know, Vietnam is up here, and then Australia would be down here, kind of uh, south, southeast of Indonesia. And talking of Australia, we have Risey in the chat. The He's panel. muted, though. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, no right out, Brad again. Talk for 10 minutes. Rizy, we love you, but, but you, you gotta you gotta at least stop drinking for a whole week, Rizy. Yeah, we want no, you to be around that. for a long Wait, time. Wait, that's crazy talk, man. I don't <laughs> do people really not the drink. Crazy that talk well? was used this morning. Yeah, it was. Well, Especially on John Dillard's show. Especially <laughs> on John hey, Dillard's show. I haven't drank all my life, Rizy. I want to say to Tyler Knox in the chat that for like two years. I did not understand why people online were referencing WCW when it had been shut down for over a decade. And then finally, I figured out that it meant Women's Women Crush Wednesday. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only just realized that when you've said it out loud. I still thought people were talking about WCW. So, Brad, when was the last time you had... Uh, when, when was the last time you, you got drunk? Never. In your entire life, what? you've never been drunk? Never. He's a lot. He's, he's, he's a good man. Drink, no, man. He's a good man. Leave that man alone. He's a good man. God bless him. I don't drink. drink. Yeah, uh, Mormons aren't, aren't technically allowed to drink. If they found out that I was drinking, oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> well, you just told the whole world now. <laughs> now, let me set a more realistic yeah, expectation for sure. you, Rizy. The last time I was drunk was uh, on July 1st of 2018. July. Okay. So it's been six plus months. Oh, wait a minute. John DeLaRue, this is a different that, subject. That's... I'm Brad's sorry to cut you like, off. Okay, that's not impressive. I'm sorry to cut you guys off, but uh, John DeLaRue was just informed everybody that the box day is uh, the reason that Chuck Tingle is so popular. What? You know, John, <laughs> yes. you know what? He needs to stop stealing our heat. You know what? That is an original. You know, we discovered the Tingle verse first out of everybody in Comics Gate. So. John DeLaRose just said it the Vox Day. He made, he made Chuck Tingle who he is today. <laughs> Quit riding my jock, John DeLaRose. <laughs> I was You're... telling the guys I was drinking with yesterday about um, Chuck Tingle. <laughs> they, I don't, I'm not sure if they believed me in the end. I forgot to show them a picture. You just you share with them the, the, the show we did. That's what you got to do. Everybody, oh, yeah. everybody go to Twitter and share the, the Enter the Tingleverse video from Crypto Comics. <laughs> if you haven't seen it and you're watching right now, as soon as the stream ends here in a few minutes, speaking of which, you boys have about six minutes remaining uh, to finish your artwork. Uh, as soon as the stream ends, you might want to go watch Enter the Tingleverse. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you will laugh your ass off big time many things happen with asses in the tingleverse <laughs> oh yeah and uh, it's worth it at crypto comics there's, there's a lot of rock bottoming going on in the tingleverse there's a lot of rock <laughs> bottoming going on in the tingleverse <laughs> a lot of pile drivers i love you john <laughs> yeah pile drivers rock bottom tombstone pile drivers all in the tingleverse <laughs> Octopus Matter of fact, this, 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 some lake, yeah, this some lakes drop soon. The Tingleverse. It's a an atomic drops. drop for your mind. Yep. <laughs> the bonsai drop. Yeah, the bonsai drop. The bookend. Matter of yeah. fact, there's a whole there's a whole lot of uh Big Daddy V in the Tingleverse too. This is Big Daddy V. Oh my gosh. This, 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 this a lot. This is a lot of Mark Henry too. You know, sexual chocolate <laughs> Tingleverse. Forced gay by Big V. <laughs> yep. Remember, remember uh, Mark Henry's original theme song is Sexual Baby. Sexual. sexual I'll give it all to you. Yeah. <laughs> that was my theme song. 
Now I'm going to ask PS Melter if he's done with his art. Oh, oh I'm done. Okay, PS Melter, do you want to make the straw poll? Yeah, sure. Let me so see that the, you so make that the, the straw poll. You twelve so people who are watching can vote. Yeah, if I can do this. The, the funny <laughs> thing about it is, most of the twelve people are us. Ambienta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the Ambienta. artwork now. And I'm going to let everyone in the chat see it. And P.S. Oh, Meltzer is going to. Yeah, you just keep going, buddy. Just keep going. Don't worry about what I'm saying. You just keep going on your artwork. Here's a question. Why did you have P.S. Meltzer make it? Why didn't you make it? Because I forgot. am too busy operating <laughs> No, b the because board. leader delegates. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, Brad... I can't read. Mm -hmm. writer so what, can't nobody's read made the straw poll yet? I'm making the straw right poll's now. being made right now. It takes five minutes across comics. Don't worry. It doesn't matter. You're not going to win. <laughs> that was brutally honest. Yeah, it's a power bomb, oh. buddy. Yo, man. He said, oh, you're going to take the bump tonight. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna get you well, a little color tonight, I'm brother. Full. Ooh. Well, I would like to. I would like to look at this uh, suburban commando, but you know, Ninja's still working on it a little bit, putting some finishing touches on it. Yeah, you know, it tells well, me in the chat thing here, Brad. That says, is, "How many times are you gonna do it?" Brad, I do. Me, I wasn't talking the first time <laughs> or second time. This way it sneaks up on you. Yeah, but, but, but Risey, man, we love you. We want you to be around for a while, man. You know, we want you your kidneys and your lip on it to be in top sheet. No, yeah. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give two extra free points here, even though the points don't really add up to mean anything. Uh I'm gonna give two points to Cross Comics for including Hulk rules on the shirt. I must admit I am disappointed that no one else put Hulkamania on a shirt. Oh I couldn't. I know well, I know you couldn't. You're doing the Hollywood Hogan. Yeah. Yours in Hollywood that you don't have him full body with the lightning trunks that I loved oh, so much when I was younger. Fine. But you know what? Those were the best trunks ever. Other than that nose, uh, which is terrible. The rest what of it nose? looks really great. <laughs> My nose? Uh -huh. I, I want to yeah. vote for that bear. Did I want to vote for that bear picture that uh, Misfit was uh -huh. doing. That, I think that bear wins out all these Hulk Hogan pictures. No, it don't count. It don't count. <laughs> that is Hulk's nose. Ninja? I, I, yeah. I'm going to give you just a couple more minutes here, buddy. Well, how you said we had how much time? We, you better I just keep going. Now you're down to one minute. Minutes. Okay. Now I'm taking away a minute from you. Oh, okay. I see how it is. Yeah, I'm going to take Sound away good? three minutes. Okay. You, you're you disqualified for going over the time limit. Are you sure? <laughs> I've changed the time limit. I'm changing it to two minutes ago. And you're still <laughs> doing it. So you're done. No, I'm just going to keep going. Isn't that what we call house rules? That's right. Yep. That's right. That's right. I guess Yo, so. man. Testosterone just pulled a uh, Triple H on you, man. He just pulled a Triple H on you, man. That's right. That's right. This isn't an Iron Man match. There's not going to be any overtime like when Brett got screwed. It's, it's called making up as you go along. <laughs> That's right. You see uh, your friendly neighborhood ninjas just doing some touch-ups. Oh, Anonymous Yes is in the chat. Oh, I missed you, Anonymous Yes. Anonymous, yes, I think of you as a woman because of your avatar. I'm going to be honest. I think I think of you as a woman. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you a man or a woman, Anonymous? Yes. What's I just, that? I just avatar? I'm so curious to know. But Anonymous, I like somebody just mute crypto. Brad muted <laughs> testosterone. Brad muted. <laughs> <laughs> Brad oh shoot! The mute button. <laughs> that would be good. Oh, he's gone. That's what happens when you fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Brad, I have the eject button. I just hit the ejector seat. Brad's gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think ready for me to post the poll. <laughs> <laughs> if you well, let's wait until Brad hops back in here. I don't think you can with you ejecting him. I'm excited. Anonymous yes is all man. He's a real American. There you go, brother. Hey, and Brad, if you're still listening, you muted the wrong person. 
The meme is mute crazy. I'm tired of hearing this guy too. Let's just get rid of him. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now I'm now it's better. Now the show's gotten a lot better now. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did me and Misfit just drew the same thing? I just noticed. <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, you guys have done something similar there. That is true. Yeah, but this is like the probably the most iconic picture. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What is taking these guys so long to get back in here? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oops. Oops. I found that out last night when I got kicked up there. <laughs> I didn't know. I swear I didn't know. <laughs> Uh, we're sorry, Rick. We're, we're sorry, Brad. We both of you. Let me invite him. Yeah, he's banned. That's what it said to me last night. Oh, it's banned. Was... Yeah. Oh, she... oh no. Sorry, what have you guys. Done? That's invite him back. All right. Well, I'll just go ahead and put the poll up. I guess. What is Cross Comics? How, what's his email? Do we know? I love it, dude. I love it. I kicked him no. out. Oh, no. <laughs> it's messed up. Oh, God. Oh. Well, well we learned something today. Once you get to yeah. the chat, you're banned for the rest of the stream. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> Oh. Well, I said uh, they got the big boot, brother. The big brute. Yeah, that was a leg drop from hell. Everybody saw all the pictures. Uh, all right. So here we go. This is uh, your friendly neighborhood ninjas right here, the Suburban Commando. We have uh, P.S. Melter with the Mr. Nanny Hulk Hogan. We have Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics. <laughs> <laughs> this stunning mm. piece of art. It's not a bear, so you know you might be disappointed in that. No, it's beautiful. My main man in Malaysia, the mighty mighty Mior. Yeah, classic Hulk Hogan shirt tear. Well, I'm just going to show General John Wallace because I kicked out Cross Comics and he can't get back in. But he did have some artwork <laughs> that I know you all saw, and I know you all saw Brad Ashworth's Brad Ashworth's amazing Hollywood Hulk Hogan. So now is the time to vote. P.S. Melter has placed it into the chat. He is a true stud. And uh, now is the chance to vote. And we're not going to wait forever. So if you want to vote, now would be the time to vote. I am going to vote. Yeah, vote twice, vote often. Who will it be? Will it be P.S. Melter Hayes, the Macho Muir Savage, Clean Fall Cross, Brad, Rock's Bottom Boy, Ashworth. <laughs> <laughs> and Quarantine Bear, Shaper. Sharper. Very good. It's, it's not my fault. I spelled it wrong, I think. That's all Sorry. right. <laughs> Who will win? <laughs> I have, fabulous I have affected two artists. They won't come back ever. <laughs> <laughs> so vote for them. Vote, vote for Brad just so he'll come back. Who will it be? Who will it be? Mm -hmm. I wonder. Will it be your friendly neighborhood ninja with the suburban commando? Will it be T.S. Melter with the Mr. Nanny? Will it be Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics with the classic Hulk Hogan shirt tear? Will it be Mior who's no longer projecting his shot of Hulk Hogan with the classic shirt tear? <laughs> Will it be cross comics with Hulk Hogan in the ring, where in the ring wearing the Hulk Lives T-shirt, or will it be Pencil for Life, Brad Ashworth's absolutely fabulous Hollywood Hulk Hogan in grayscale? We are going to find out here in the next minute. If you have not voted, click that straw poll in the chat. It is free to vote. We are not tracking your information. And Cross Comics, I'm so sorry I kicked you out. I was just for fun. I didn't know that it meant you could never get back in. I really didn't. I'd never ejected anyone before. I'm sorry. I, I would love there to get back in. Let me Brad, Brad. Back in. There's Brad. Okay, so uh, Cross Comics, uh, we uh, want to get you back in here. If I have your email address, I can do that. I understand not wanting to put it into the yeah. chat, so maybe you could send it to Melter on uh, 
on uh, Twitter, and then uh, he can put it in the chat in here, and we can just do it the roundabout way. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay, Cross Comics, maybe I meant to kick you out. Maybe I didn't want you in here again. Maybe <laughs> I'm playing the heel. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't hear you when you said it. Your mic is kind of funny, Cross Comics. It's kind of delayed. Um, I'm gonna repost this straw poll and give people a couple more minutes to vote. If you have not voted, I highly recommend you vote for yourself, artists. Uh, Brian, do you think that's how, how it happened? You, or do you think there was like a time wait? Because that's how it happens when you mute the mic. I think it's a time yeah. wait. Oh, is it really? Yeah, because okay. like, I, I tried a couple times. It wouldn't let me in. So. I uh, did it, but then I sent it to your email. Did that? Is that what did it? No, I just came back in. I just clicked oh. on it. Oh, okay. I didn't okay. even check my email. Oh, okay. okay so don't, don't worry about that then. Just go ahead and... Um, Get back in here. Yeah, yeah just click on the back. link, Ross. Just keep on clicking back on that link from the uh, from Facebook. I mean, on Facebook, from Twitter. It'll, it'll let you back in eventually. Now is your chance to vote, ladies and gentlemen. Who will it be? Will it be your friendly neighborhood ninja with this incredible... Oh, yeah, brother. Ninja? Will it be P.S. Melter with the absolutely hysterical Mr. Nanny? <laughs> Will it be Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics with the out of sight, roided out, juicy Hulk <clears throat> Hogan totally on the gas? <laughs> Will it be I, I love that, man. That's awesome. <laughs> mighty, mighty Muir, the main man in Malaysia. Mighty, mighty Boston's. <laughs> oh, the mighty, mighty Boston's. I'd just be the dude who dances around on stage, not singing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could be the singer though. Will it be Pencil for Life, Brad Ashworth with the Hollywood Hulk Hogan? Or will it be Cross Comics? We're gonna find out here very soon. Click on the link, Cross. Click on the link, Cross. I don't want to tally the votes until you have returned. Baby, come back. You can put <laughs> all on me. <laughs> Yep. Come on, Rick. Back. You can. We need you back, brother. On me. Yeah, we got like sixteen people watching. Looks we'll like we got like ten votes. We need six yeah, we more. Have six more votes. Come on, guys. You can vote. Don't be afraid. It, it doesn't cost anything to vote. It's very simple. It's very easy. I know you're playing a video game right now, and it's a real <laughs> pain in the ass. You're playing, you know, SmackDown Seven for the I don't know GameCube, whatever <laughs> Saturn. But you can still come in here and you can still vote. It only takes a second. You just pause the game. It's okay to. They probably playing Fortnite. Playing <laughs> Fortnite. I don't know. I don't even know what that is. But you know what? I think it's great that you're having fun with it. Answer is what it is. But what we need is everyone to vote. Everyone, we need you to vote. It's very important. Or these uh, these fabulous oh, artists will never come back because uh, they'll be like these oh, people don't even care. The door to church is open. Won't you come? Won't the you door come? to the church Please is vote. open. Reverend Please John Wallace is here. Uh, well, testosterone overload, anonymous. Hey, Cross, yet. I, I sent it to your Twitter again. Try it again. I am. Uh, yes, I am just north of Portland in the great state of Washington. Won't you come to go to church? Is Please. why you see all this Portland wrestling on this channel. Thirty six hundred videos strong here on testosterone overload. It'll keep you busy for a few years watching this channel. Trusty sidekick. I will show them again. I would be very happy to. The uh, straw poll is available. Your friendly neighborhood ninja drew this totally, totally awesome suburban commando. Yeah, you need to click on him, dude. Look Maybe at that, brother. That oh, sexy brother. Brother. Oh, yeah, my bad. P.S. Melter drew the out of sight Mr. Nanny Hulk Hogan. Lots of fun. Carl should be out of sight, brother. Misfit Corner should Comics be. drew the. Okay, uh, you're gonna have to hit him up on Twitter, dude. At the at the at the peak of the steroid use, which is fine with me, I support steroid use amongst adults. Sorry, Cross. Maybe let let's sit there for a minute. I don't know. The, the link the link is still in the chat. He, he just uh, sent the message on Twitter through the chat. The yeah, link is in the I, chat. I get it, but he keeps clicking on it and it's not letting him. So maybe because you keep trying. This is uh, Muir's artwork right here. This is Hulk Hogan at the beginning of a, a shirt rip. See, it's like it's an evolution here. It's like you start where Muir is, where he's just starting to tear the shirt, and then and then Andrew has the shirt absolutely torn to shreds. We have Brad Ashworth. We were trying to get Cross Comics back in here. I ejected him for fun, and uh, now he can't get back in. Realize it bans him out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anonymous, yes, I can absolutely positively transfer your VHS tapes to DVD if they are old Portland wrestling. Uh, what I would recommend you do is come to facebook.com forward slash legit pro wrestling. It's very easy. If you just search for Portland wrestling on Facebook, you will see my page. There are 11,000 other Portland wrestling fans on there that you could be interacting with all the time. And we can talk more if you send me a message through there. I will be able to give you my P.O. box and uh, yeah, be happy to transfer your tapes. It's just it takes a little bit more talking because you might have, you know, if the original tapes that you taped off TV, then I would be very interested. If you bought them from someone else, they might already be in this collection. And so send me a message on uh, uh, Facebook.com forward slash legit pro wrestling, Portland wrestling on Facebook, and I will get to you promptly we want to get cross comics back in here i told him moments ago minutes ago that I'd, all i need is his email address and we might be able to bring him back in it'll make it much easier on him it's in the chat thing here isn't it melter there we go okay okay let me get you rick piper we're gonna bring him in and uh here we go Let's see if this works Slick Rick Piper. See, this is why I only mute. I don't kick people. Well, I didn't know. You know, I'm new. <laughs> now that I know, that's going to come in much more, much handier in the future. I'm going to be kicking people all the time. So Sorry, I, have, I was a little loud. I had to mute myself. I have sent the the man, Rick, uh, Rowdy Rick Piper. I've sent him uh, an invite, so he should be able to hop right back in here now that I've sent the invite. That should make it much easier. If you have not voted yet, this is your last chance. I am prepared to tally these votes and see who the winner is. Also, uh, yeah, let, yeah. let Rick Piper know. Let Rick Piper know if you sent him an email. Sometimes it shows up in your spam box and won't show up in the primary. It'll show up in the spam one. So he has the link. He can come back in. It was fun to eject him. Uh, next time, I'll eject everyone. That way, it's my, <laughs> you're alone. The winner will be whoever gets back first. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, if you have not voted, this is your last chance to vote. I'm going to tally the votes in approximately 60 seconds. So now is your chance to vote. T minus and counting. I'm going to give you right, brothers. You know you want to vote for me. 30 more seconds. Me, a vote for the real Hulkster. Anonymous, yes. Uh, if you want to send me an email with uh, you know, do you have email anonymous? Yes. He doesn't have Facebook. Who doesn't have Facebook? You could just start a fictitious Facebook. You don't have to use your real name. You need to be able to communicate with all these other wonderful Portland wrestling fans, you would absolutely love being on Facebook.com forward slash legit pro wrestling. Okay. Okay. In 10 seconds, I am going to tally the votes. If you have not voted, please vote. If you have not liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button. I have no idea what he just said. He said vote cross comics. Oh, just, just he, he said, said vote cross comics. So yeah, don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. He went straight to it. Yeah. Good. Very smart of him. Very smart of him. Okay. So now I am going to tally the votes. If you didn't vote, okay. Too bad. You missed out. We have a total of 13 votes. Tied for fourth place is P.S. Melter and the Macho Muir Savage. Oh, with a bronze medal, we have a tie. It is Andrew, the Berenstein Bear, Charper, and Brad, Rock's Bottom Boy, Ashworth. With right. a silver medal, we have Clean Fall, Cross Comics. Uh, I think I he voted for himself. Two times. It was done five minutes ago. Now, I want you to tell me the truth, Rick. How many cell phones do you own? Yeah. I only own one. Uh -huh. Okay. It's Ninja who has a bunch. Yeah. And our winner, and I am so excited, it is the Nature Boy, more fabulous, friendly, 
neighborhood, neighborhood. India, with the suburban commando Hulk Hogan. A fitting winner indeed this evening. He gets the right, brother. Very nice. You right. are the new drawing blood heavyweight champion of testosterone overload. No, and we have Julian Rice he's in the chat. Oh, just for Sorry a second. Sorry about that, guys. Gonna... I was hoping it was your beautiful twin brother and you guys were going to both team up on Brad. Uh, uh, guys, guys, <laughs> um, I got some, I got some, I got some news for you guys. Uh, Roka Beer is willing to come on the the move the Needle Mover Society and squash all the beef. Oh, sure, okay, that's yeah. some good news, brother. Yeah, yeah set it up, brother, set it up. When? Uh, uh, ASAP, Skinny, brother. Skinny Ninja just sent something in the the, the comic buyer uh, DM, so I'm going to tell him to set it up. Okay, yeah, set it up. Um, I'm available pretty much all weekend. You know, Brad! that could be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it said uh, I'm gonna read the message to you. Uh, Skinny Ninja said also Rose just willing to, to come me on. Off the air. Just read it to me off the air. Okay, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. Yeah, let's people. We'll keep people yeah. hanging on for uh, the Crypto Comics War Campaign feud, which is now gonna spill over onto the Needle Mover Society. We'll it's see. Not a we feud. It's not maybe a I feud. Maybe I'll bust. Maybe I will bust row open out no. of nowhere. No, you're not. Leave no, him you're a not. bloody no, you're mess. Not. No, you're not. We're going to end Bloody this. Digital We're going to end it. We're going to end this for good. No, no, let, no. Me, let me hype it up a little bit. Oh, let me God. hype it up. We're doing wrestling hype. Wrestling hype. Yeah, this no. is, that's what we're doing. We're, we're hyping it up. That's going to be on the Needle, the Needle Mover Society here sometime in the near future. So if you don't subscribe over there, you probably are going to want to. And, uh, I, you know, I want to get back to the heavyweight champion. Ninja, do you have anything you want to say to the people? You know, you, you have drawn uh, a stunning original piece of art. This might be the best piece of art I've ever seen you draw, dude. You should, you should do a comic book. You should try to license Suburban Commando and make a comic Anything book. at all, Ninja. And, you know, yeah. don't let Brad mess with you with the muting. Like, <laughs> rude. He's muted you. He's not going to let you speak. It's rude. He's jealous of your... <laughs> He's very jealous of I know, him. Brad. It's all right. It's all right, brother. <laughs> I'll let you carry my towels for me. It's all you did right. good, brother. You did good. Why are you... What are we screen sharing now? What the hell is going on here? Oh, sorry, brother. Put your I had to unmute myself out. because of Brad. Coming for you now, Brad. There's the picture. Okay. There's the art. <laughs> no, I just want to thank everybody who voted for me. It means a lot. I have. I, I want to stay humble here. I want to stay humble, except for to <laughs> all of the losers who I crushed this evening, <laughs> brother. <laughs> right, NWO for life. Uh, NWO okay. for life, brother. <laughs> Welcome to the new world order. No, I just I want to play some theme music right now, but I I don't want to get a copyright strike on the channel, so. No, no. Uh, just imagine, just imagine Hulkster's original theme playing right now. Right now, guys. Canadian. Thank you. Oh, correct. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'll sing it for you. You ready? You ready? Start your monologue. I'll sing it for you. I just want to thank everyone who showed up here tonight. I love who voted for me. You. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm holding this belt right now. I'm shaking my spray paint can. Yeah, do it. That's right. Now, Hulkster has always been one of my favorites. So it was a pleasure to be able to show up here and draw the Hulkster. Um, this isn't the first time I've drawn the Hulkster, just so you know. I uh, drew a Hulkster in the high school years um, that uh, actually uh, got me some. Some sort of notoriety back in the day, but uh, much love to the Hulkster if he ever tunes in for this. Hulkster, you're my favorite uh, of all time. I have to say, Hulkster has made uh, wrestling what it is today. If it weren't for the Hulkster, we wouldn't have wrestling like it is. Now, he's got to give it up to Hulkster. Amen. He brought the heat. He had probably some of the funnest movies uh, that a pro wrestler has been in. I mean, yeah, let's face it, Hulkster. You know, we couldn't have, uh, you know, and, and his his uh, rhetoric with Mean Gene, I, I'm sorry I missed last week's drawn in blood or uh, drawing blood. 
missed it. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I'll try and make sure I, I show my love for all the wrestling that's been a uh, big wrestling fan. I'll be here next week for you guys. It just sounds like you're taking a dump. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, just love everybody here. I got it. Ooh, Thank everybody. This is this is fantastic. Thank you guys. I have much you know, love for everybody. Now I'm just you know what you go. can also do? Go just uh, go go to Twitter and uh, post that uh, picture on Twitter and tag Hulk Hogan in it. I will. Yes, absolutely, and share it with me so that I can uh, use it as the thumbnail on this video after we're done streaming. I will do you that. Best. What I want to do is I want to go through and let everybody uh, say what they've been doing in comics, in case you don't know. And I want to thank, of course, all the beautiful people in Webtown who took time to tune in for this this evening. And, you know, what we got to do is we got to give away a copy of this, right, Ninja? I forgot all about that. Oh, heck yeah. So if will, you, uh... if you beautiful people want to get a copy of Ninja's artwork right here, he will actually print this out and send it to you in the mail. All you have to do is contact him on Twitter, and we're going to pick one person. If there is one person in the chat who wants it, now would be the time to say so. Now would be the time to say so. All you have to do is type in Hulkster, brother. It's very simple. Yeah, very first easy. person to type in Hulkster, brother. And while we wait, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ask the lovely and vivacious Brad <laughs> Ash to tell us uh, what uh, he's been working on lately and plug his comic book. Uh, working on the Handyman. Uh, marketing for it starts next week. Uh, the first campaign for it will start <laughs> oh, in February. And I'm muted, am I? What? No, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. okay. Yeah, you just, you're going to be expecting that a lot lately, Brad. I uh, know I am, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, check out my channel, Pencil for Life. Uh, my Twitter is Pencil for Life. Uh, you can also, if you want to buy the Hulk, you can hit me up there. We can come up with a price. You'll sell that to someone, right? You'll sell that to someone? Yeah. And all I have to do is follow you, on, like, go to you on Twitter at, at Pencil for Life? Yeah. And that's with the, what's with the number four? Yeah, correct. When, and could they find you on Facebook if they don't have Twitter? Yeah. Pencil and that would be life. at Brad Ashworth? No, Pencil for Life. Pencil for Life, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. you can actually pick up this piece of original art by a real comic book artist. If you want. Now, Cross Comics, what do you want to plug? Uh, you can find me over on uh, my channel, Cross Comics, and I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, under Cross Comics as well. And I'm willing to sell mine too for 10 bucks plus shipping, which is, I think, three bucks. It's $26 for... to ship from Canada to the United States, even if it's just one piece of paper. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> John. John the Reverend, John the General Wallace. What do you? Oh want? yeah. Well, you can find me on uh, the YouTube's under General John Wallace or on Twitter under John N Wallace twenty eight at John N Wallace twenty eight. And I'm just a mid tier beast, a mid tier writer. You know, I'm working on a book called The Grand Crusade. Should be out uh, the end of 2019, hopefully. And uh, trying to squash beep on interwebs and make friends and enjoy good stories. Excellent. The mighty, mighty Mior from Malaysia. What's the project you want to promote here, my friend? Okay, uh, I am currently working on my webcomic, which is ongoing. It is titled uh, The Broken and the Dam. It is about a uh, eldritch abomination, uh, essentially a tentacle monster, and he is the hero of the story. It is basically a Lovecraftian light. And uh, I also want to say that I am open for commission, so if anyone is interested, you can just... Contact me on Twitter, and uh, anything goes with me. I, I don't really mind. And, uh, yeah, and uh, I also want to thank uh, Ninja and uh, Troy, Mr. Marvel, for helping me find the courage to start taking commissions. Uh, thank you to both of you. And uh, you. I, Oh, and I think, I, I think I'll share the link to my webcomic in, uh, in the chat. Please well, do. Do. Yes, please definitely do. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, yeah. The insatiable Andrew Charper from Misfit Corner Comics. What are you going to plug tonight with your amazing fingerless gloves that make you seem like the most talented homeless man 
in uh, America. <laughs> actually, believe it or not, these actually help right now because it's cold outside, and even though I'm in Florida, it's still in the 40s tonight. So, oh god, actually keep, 40s? keep my hands oh. pretty. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> If you get an opportunity, go check out Misfit Corner Comics on YouTube. We do a uh, live stream three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 7.30 Eastern time. A couple of us get together, draw, talk comics, and we had a hilarious show this evening uh, a little earlier today. It's it's still up and available if anybody wants to check it out, but we do live drawing on it, and uh, I'm working on the third book in my series, and I pretty much do everything on camera, so... Uh, I make videos and you guys can see the process and follow along and uh, love to have anybody come over and say hi. P S Melter Hayes. What would you like to share today with these beautiful people in Webtown? Well, you can find me here on YouTube and on Facebook, P S Melter. I'll be occasionally <laughs> popping in videos here and there, building a, uh, like Legos and other stuff and doing some models here and there when I, I got a model on build sometimes either on JP4 or, or Model 316's channel as well. And uh, I also do a little bit of art here and there and some I'm going to be doing some uh, online reviews, well, like of web comics. So I guess I'll be uh, reading Muir soon and then that way I can actually talk about Muir sooner or later than on my channel because... That does sound like a great Cosmio, and I, I can't wait to uh, check it out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. My main man, Risey Lee, the Australian international champion. I see that you're muted, but I want to give I you an that opportunity. I did that to myself. Because um, you are on a ton of streams all over YouTube. Is there anything you want to plug? Um. Yeah, you can check out like some amazing artists like Good Dog Prez, EOTs, like... Cross, John Dillard, um, yeah, everyone that's an awesome artist. I'm usually like hanging around in the chats or on the stream occasionally. Uh, yeah, so that's about that, I think. Sorry, I'm really hungover. Go ahead and just give a hail. <laughs> hail <Hello, sir. laughs> Your friendly neighborhood ninja, our testosterone overload, drawing blood, world. Heavyweight champion. This is true. You actually have competed against two guys from foreign countries, and you've won. Plus a Mormon. You beat a Mormon, and that's like pretty hard to do because they're <laughs> they're kind of like uh, you know they're they're well, they're similar to the some, Amish of the West. We call them out here. We call them the Amish Mormon. of the West. It takes a Mormon to beat a Mormon. Oh so I I was <laughs> the only one who could beat Brad. Um. And it was your wrestling if, skills. It was your if, wrestling And that was, that was, you know, by the skin. It was. It was my, it was my long-term lung that got me through. It was all the falls that I've taken in the past, all the, all the blood that I've spilled on the mat. I have to say, I, I mean, I was, you know, I was hardcore for a while. Those kendo sticks at some point, you know. But, uh, no, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm shit-talking just like, uh, I would if I was in the wrestling world. I have to say uh, a plug-in for... Uh, I'm the colorist for Sporkman Goes to Japan. Also, I'll be doing some of the uh, other stories that are going to be coming out from uh, Sporkman. You can find Sporkman Goes to Japan on uh, Comixology right now. You can get the digital downloads for yourself and have those. And also, you can go to uh, Indie Planet. And pick up a copy of uh, Sporkman Conventions right now. You can have yourself a nice color copy of that. Get it in your hands. Also, uh, Doug Garrett and I are going to be creating a comic called Psychotron. And uh, it's going to be taking place in the post-apocalypse after World War III. About a decommissioned uh, cyborg super soldier. And uh, you can look for that coming out either uh, mid-summer of this year or probably early uh, next year. And uh, also be on the lookout for Science Wizard Comics. It's going to be coming to you with some fantastic stories. All right. Go check out their uh, Twitter page and go check out some of the fantastic stuff that they've been producing. Also, just like Mior. 
I am uh, open for commissions as well. So if you guys need some characters drawn up or something like that, you guys come on over and I'll uh, hook you up. And uh, I just want to say I'm very proud of this comic community that we've uh, got going on here. And, it, and the uh, hard work that Testosterone has been doing on his channel and all the fantastic stuff that he's got. You guys got to check this channel out. Fantastic wrestling that you can go back and watch some of the classic matches guys that you got. Well, some of us old heads grew up watching that this is where they get their start. So much love to everybody out here. And I, I want to thank every one of you guys who voted for me. I have much love for you. Hit me up on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I guess I know where that uh, this Hulkster picture is going, or at least a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> that gummit with the shipping i can't promise you know with the uh the shipping as it as it is i can't you can promise just email it to him dude <laughs> yeah i might <laughs> i think canada still charges three bucks for that though bastards <laughs> oh my god dude, anyway. they charge email? hey if anybody else says it in the chat they can have it <laughs> no, 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 that, that you was your comic. rules yeah sorry buddy so uh, so here we go. This is the end. I want to thank all of these wonderful artists for showing up. I want to thank P.S. Melter, who works very hard to uh, produce this show and put it together for all you beautiful people in TV land. If I'm going to plug anything, well, I'm going to say, if you love classic professional wrestling and you love Portland wrestling, the home of many, many WWE legends before you'd ever even heard of them, I would suggest sticking he around here at Testosterone Overload where there are 3,600 professional wrestling videos going back to 1977, including Superfly Jimmy Snuka, Roddy Roddy Piper, Playboy Buddy Rose, Colonel De Beers, the American Ninja, Brian Adams, a.k.a. Crush, a.k.a. one half of the Tag Team Chronic, so many more, including Scotty the Body, a.k.a. Raven. You can really, you can stick around here for years having a good time watching professional wrestling. Uh, there are original documentaries with everyone from Paul Orndorff, to Bruiser Brody's Widow, to the lovely Diana Hart. There is Heartbeat Radio, the weekly podcast I do with professional wrestling legend Bruce Hart of the Hart family. And the fun times are just getting started here on Testosterone Overload. If you love comic books, I highly suggest that you join me at Crypto Comics so that you can hear the most outspoken leader of Comics Gate each and every week doing God knows what. Who knows what I'm going to do next? Who knows what I'm going to say next? You have to stay tuned. You have to tune in to find out. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, all you beautiful people in Webtown. And last but not least, a very happy birthday to our man, Joshua Hughes. Can we just get like a, a hail, Joshua? Hail, hail Joshua. Joshua. Happy birthday. Hail, 